Okay, and after a long break, mm. we are back. Yes, quite a long break. Okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone, for another session of the Black Aurora. Uh, we are on session 80 today, finally hitting the 80s. Uh, this is another subplot, like the last couple we've done. We've done um, a subplot in Kytark. We did most recently a subplot in the Verdant Territory, and this is a subplot in Bardest, one of the continents that has not had any interaction yet, that the main team is on their way to. This is the Trials of Pyzane, our uh, dear claim keeper who has been amiss for a bit. He's been away. And we are picking up with a new group of heroes, as we do with each subplot. And... Uh, you might notice a couple differences in stream as well. I just want to make note of it. Uh, Freya, uh, AJ, he now has a uh, dice cam in place of nothing for his uh, his webcam. So there'll be something there to view. Uh, and yeah, let me actually stop this music real quick. Yeah. And I will begin as we do. Pull up the right one. As we are jumping into the trials of Pyzane. On the continent of Bardest, a massive sprawling land of deserts and jungles, there was a capital city known as Devest Orlin, the seat of the Clean Throne. This seat of power belongs to Zivadona, the Eternal. A world dragon in disguise, though most of her subjects know of her true nature. She is ruthless, power-hungry, and known for... little mercy. The one mercy she does have is exile. Those who wrong her, but show that they are worth redemption, may be spared execution or a life of slavery by being sent to Exilos, on the far side of the continent, across the mountain ranges and the deserts, as far from her light as she can send you, while still within her domain. We follow our journey now, as a ship taking off from Port Orland through the Dragontail Gulf makes its way into the Aurora Sea along the coastline. The ship creaks and groans as it crests over waves, traversing the deeper waters along the northeastern coast of Bardest. Above deck, ship hands brace themselves and ward off the oppressive heat as they leave the capital city on the horizon behind them. This ship, named the Forsaken Fool, has made this same voyage time and time again, transporting special cargo to its new home. Below deck, this cargo finds itself in equally oppressive straits, not burdened by surf and sun, but shackles and shame. The four remaining members of a group of mercenaries known as the Psionic Reavers find themselves stripped to rags and chained hand and foot. Personal belongings taken, pride stolen, and futures decided for them. Just days ago, they were living the good life as warriors under the stewardship of Caprillo, one of the most influential and powerful claimers of Bardest. Today, they are exiles, headed for their new home in Exilos. Convicted of a crime they did not commit, attempted assassination of the claim chieftain and eternal queen of Bardest, Zivadona. Their lives are spared only by the grace of their supposed target. Betrayed by their benefactor, they are branded as exiles henceforth, unwelcome among the blessed people of Clan Claimed until they prove themselves worthy. Your throats, each of you, have been scarred by a ceremonial tool bearing the shape of a dragon claw. It leaves a long, thin, red, jagged line as if your throat had been slit and healed over though you felt no pain in its application. This is in part symbolic of your deaths as free citizens of the nation, but it also acts as assurance that none will give them respite within the lands of the Eternal. This mark you all know to be the mark of an exile. 
and it is made with one of the lesser known tools of the claim chieftain one of her own claws made into a dagger and as you four know if Zivadona wishes it her claws her damaging abilities are unhealable she has permanent wounds she can inflict on those which you all have now received one of this uh this mark will bind you as an exile and if you are ever caught back in the lands of the sun and the eternal it will kill you your only recourse is the trials three temples erected eons ago by zivadona herself that act as penance for your crimes by undergoing and passing these trials you may yet find yourselves once again under the divine grace of the claim chieftain and welcomed with open arms back home. And yet, none have ever met a reformed exile before. And rumors circulate that these trials are nothing more than execution grounds used to enforce fear into the would-be criminals of the nation. But then again, never before have four exiles arrived at once as coordinated and accomplished as these former reavers are. Perhaps their futures are not yet decided. And unbeknownst to them, there is another who waits in exile, who seeks the trials, and his return to the clan. So, psionic reavers, as you sit below deck of the, the Forsaken Fool, this ship that takes exiles and prisoners to their new lives, the boat creaks, and it's quite uncomfortable. You are each in individual cells next to each other, able to see each other as it just seems like there are installed bars within the wood itself. You are shackled. You have chains around your wrists and ankles. Your wrists are in front of you with about a foot of slack between them. It makes casting somatic components difficult, but not impossible. You do know that there is an understanding here that you're not being shackled with the intent of keeping you here. If you had teleportative teleportation abilities, you probably could leave if you wanted. But you're still marked as an exile. That mark will not go away. And if you are spotted back in the capital with that mark, the wound will open and you will bleed out in seconds. Your only recourse to return to any form of society in Bardest and perhaps attain revenge against the one who betrayed you is to go through with exile and complete the trials. So as you four sit there, looking amongst each other, is there anything you guys would like to discuss? As you are not gagged or blinded, you are free to, to discuss as you would like, only shackled hand and foot, perhaps as a symbolic, a symbolic thing. Viscar have questioned for Freya. Freya, how long has it been? So, Viscar, uh, <laughs> as you speak up first, uh, I will move us back to the screen I had before. If you could please describe yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so Viscar um, is a uh, emerald dragonborn. Um, he is, has uh, very dark emerald scales that more look like rocks rather than your trip typical draconic scales, so kind of that mm. polished texture. Um, there's lighter pigmented scales over the chest that are kind of interwoven with um, uh, kind of like crystal, kind of like a, a marble. So mm. that like your quartz color and then woven in are the darker emerald kind of like uh, veins, if you will. Cool. Um, cool. On his head, there's strawberry colored moss that just kind of make up his hair. Oh, kind okay. Of going with the the rock earth. I like uh, that. Thing. Um, and then on his ears, they're kind of combined with his horns that kind of make up like a fringe as sorts. Mm. Um, and the horns kind of extend extend back. Hi, Mira. Um, Thank okay. you for the sub. Uh, appreciate it. Um, and then on his face, Happy New Year's. There's a dark tattoo like pattern covering like the eyes, extending down the neck, over top of the forehead, going back into mm. the hair. Um, and that dark 
um, tattoo is kind of more um, in between the surface or underneath the surface of the scales. And they kind of okay. look like... Um, like you've maybe removed the ink. scales, then tattooed, and they've kind of grown over? Yeah, and the okay. ink itself is... Um, it looks liquidy, like it's still kind of free-flowing. Gotcha. Um, and while it's hunched down, um, it's hard to tell, but he's a big dude. Very yeah, dude. yeah. As Viscar is in this cell, <laughs> the cells are all the cells are all like six foot by like six foot. Like they're not massive. Um, Viscar is a medium sized creature, but even still, his bulk sitting on like the small bench you have, the shackles were almost too small for Viscar to fit around your wrists. They had to almost like double up the shackles to make it make sense for you. And you also feel like if you wanted, you might be able to strain these a bit and potentially make some headway. But you're also not necessarily the most physically strong, despite your size. <laughs> yes. Um, and then flowing, free flowing is a, a white aura. Ah, yes. White aura. Yes. Okay. So, Viscar, you spoke up. Viscar, I have a question for Freya. <clears throat> Freya, how long has it been? Uh. I was hungry. Freya, if you would like to introduce your character. Uh, yes. So, Freya is a very pale-skinned uh, creature known as a Dampier. Mm -hmm. Tall and yet well-muscular, still, like, slender enough to be... Athletic. Guess, yeah. Like an athletic build, right? Um, yeah, it's like... She's, like, six foot three, so she's actually mm -hmm. quite tall. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, she has very dark raven hair. Her eyes are a piercing uh, blue. Mm. And she just seems like kind of out of it. Like she's just not fully there. Mm. Okay. Or literally she doesn't seem like she cares to be. And do you have your aura out at this time? Uh, sure, yeah. I still have her violet aura. Okay. Flowing. Cool. Cool, cool. Which, All right. Uh, this car we know is white aligned. Okay, so two white auras basically, but one violet. Right. Okay. How would I know? All I know is it's been too long. My ass is doing freaking winters from this shitty ass wood. What? This car know that Freya know everything. <laughs> <laughs> you don't simply know the time. <laughs> As Cafella, if you would Cafella please. Cafella will laugh forward. Uh, Cafella can say, how exactly long has it been? Because I would know. Uh, it, has, it has been about two days, four hours, 16 minutes, and 32 seconds, 33 seconds, 34 seconds. As your keen mind feet picks yes. up. As I explain forward... <laughs> Time is very easy to tell, isn't it? Surely even you can do that. Come now. You were in the Reavers, were you not? Though I Real didn't quick, see you give often. Me a, give me a quick rundown yes. on Cafella's appearance. Uh, so as Cafella's talking forward, uh, there's this... A, let me go ahead and pull up. Uh, so a very long, blue-haired tiefling uh, speaking forward. You see... Um, Question, do we have any any clothing or were we stripped of You have rags? No no no, you you're not like naked. You have you have like you're not in like loincloth, you have a tunic and slacks. There there there's some sense of modesty. Um Was I given not... gloves? Thank goodness. <laughs> uh no, you would not be given gloves. So yes, okay. that would be visible. Okay. So that that I need that for my description then. Yes. Um so uh, blue skin tiefling, horns coming up, hair kind of ragged and crappy because we've been put into Two this in boat, into this yeah. situation. Um, even with the bravado she's putting forward, you can see her right hand is like pensively holding, almost trying to cover up her left hand, which you can see. Uh, you can even covering part of it. You see the edges are covered in like cragged runes, and the skin itself looks like it's almost peeling back from herself. Yeah, her left hand, from what you can see under the right one that she's trying to obscure, it looks almost like a mummified hand. And then the shitty rags that somehow she managed to get the color blue of. 
uh, as a uh, dark sapphire aura lightly uh, emanates from her. If it's got prestidigitation. Yeah, there's ways. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Specifically, she's using cantrips to make herself fashionable. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, her piercingly yellow eyes looking th almost through Freya. Mm -hmm. So. This guard think that Ice Queen mock Freya. That's not very nice. You think that I would... No, no, please, please. Go on. Okay. <laughs> well... Gregor's just looking over, like, back and forth. How much and longer? <laughs> Gregor! <laughs> yeah. I'm bored. <laughs> so, speaking up, uh, we have Gregor. Could you please introduce yourself? All right. So, this is Gregor Greenbrook. Um, right now, he's wearing what everyone else is pretty much wearing. Yep. Modest clothing. Yep. Uh, he has a little bandana or a little headband. Wrapped yeah, I, I feel like Gregor very, very, somehow... Very carefully managed to obscure to obscure the headband long enough for it to be snuck in and worn. It's not making your outfit look any more ostentatious, really. It's just a headband, but it does make you feel a little bit better about the situation that you managed to keep that away from the guards long enough to, to, to keep it. And the guards, having since seen it, don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't care. Um, he has orange eyes. Um... Obviously, he's he's pretty small. He's about four foot two. Uh, if that. You know. Yeah, if that. If that. <laughs> uh, yeah, his hair is a little matted and greasy from not having a bath for a few days, and he has a goatee. Yeah. Uh, for Gregor specifically, they had to use the smallest shackles they could find, and they're still almost too big, so they put them, like, up around your, like, your upper arm. <laughs> It's very uncomfortable, but you have full yeah, range of motion of your wrists. Like <laughs> Gregor, will you scratch back for Viscar? It itch. I can't get it. Help. Am I close to? Am I close to Viscar? Uh, yeah, I'd say your cells are all kind of like grouped around each other. Uh. Sure, we'll say that Viscar and Gregor are were... We'll say v Viscar and Gregor are next to each other, and then Freya and Cafella are next to each other across the way. Oh, Viscar, thank Gregor. Oh. Did I get it? <laughs> <laughs> Viscar, I feel better. Yeah, Gregor can actually probably fit his hands in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's as no you, escaping here, though. <laughs> as you guys are discussing how long it's been and how long it'll be and scratching certain itches. Uh, at one point you hear the sound of a door uh, of, of keys in a door as uh, the door to the brig opens and uh, a familiar guard you guys have seen just one of the sailors uh, with a couple trays of food comes in and wordlessly comes up to each of your cells and just slides it in. And it's just a small tin of what looks like a slop or a gruel, a piece of hard tack bread and a glass of water. And each of you gets the same thing. Not my acquired oh. taste, but it's something. <laughs> uh, and w wordlessly, he hands them out, picks up the trays, and goes back out the door. You could have seasoned this more. Fine. You could have thought that it was fine. This will be the first meal on our way to becoming... Relinquished from this and back in our queen's light. Yeah. <laughs> One day we will all look back on this and laugh. <laughs> as long as we're not dead first. Huh. <laughs> well, you... Technically, I'm already kind of dead. Meanwhile, as you say, we'll look right. back on this and laugh. You hear in the deck above you the raucous laughter of people eating and drinking their fill <laughs> as you guys munch on hard tack and gruel. <laughs> Uh, I could use a drink right now. <laughs> Viscar have little bit of water left. Does Gregor want? 
I you won't said, say no. I think Gregor said was thirsty, so Viscar help. Here. Oh no, I meant alcoholic drinks. Oh. <laughs> I I don't have any. I know. Oh. Dang it. <laughs> Gregor's kinda like sad. A little sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> um So what's the plan? After we get out of here. Well, the plan is to do whatever we have to with the filth over on that island, take what we need, and get out of here. What else is there to do? Go through these challenges that we will surely be able to accomplish and return to the light of Zivadona. Very confident, very confident. I like it. I'm well, so of proud of you. You said Zivadona. I just want to say I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Have I messed it up in the past? Because Becky said I had. Yeah, yeah Z Zivona or something. Z Zedivona. Really? Okay. Dona. I don't know. Okay. Something. I don't know. Zivadonia or something. I don't remember. Something. I remember yes. you saying I, it wrong. I'm very, very happy that you, you, you're good. You're good. Great. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I will finally be where I belong, beside my queen, and above the filth of this world. Uh -huh. We're gonna okay. be in the filth before you can get out of it. So <laughs> after the meal, after the meals are done, after the meals are done, another guard comes out and hands each of you a bucket to crap in. <laughs> can you just fill this with it's alcohol starting. instead, please? I just go to the guard and I'm like, the guard doesn't seem to. You as you, as you're talking to the guard, uh, give me an insight check. <laughs> yeah. First check of the night. <laughs> Yay, insight, okay. Hold on, I need to get my character sheet up. All right, there we go, got it. Uh, insight check. Yeah, mm -hmm. hey, all right. <laughs> uh, he just seems to be ignoring you and is kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> the container uh, of rel relinquishing yet another step. Are you a fucking Jew? <laughs> Is that what this is? is that what? what this is? No, nothing, never mind, sorry. No problem. Mm. Mm. Yeah, just make sure oh my you God. cover yourself and everything. We don't want to see any of that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, <sighs> well, um, God. Gregor sorry. Gregor's just so sad right now. He's like, I, I just don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah, and um, unfortunately that sentiment is something that many on the Forsaken Fool have felt, as mm -hmm. you all have nothing to do but wait. Yeah. And wait you do, as... The boat passes over the horizon, continues down from Port Orlin, keeping close to the coast, passes down around until eventually reaches Exilos after a four-day journey by boat. Every day you are fed, you are kept alive, but uncomfortable. And by the end of the journey, you each have one point of exhaustion. Oh, that's cool. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, one point of exhaustion. Yes. Let me put the exhaustion thing up. But finally, after what feels like an eternity on the open seas, you do hear up above deck, Land ho! As they call out, they are curving back in to the mainland. And you know that can only mean one thing. Home sweet home. Mm -hmm. Sailor mm -hmm. route to call land a hole. <laughs> I <Good> love it. <laughs> Lord. This is the group. This is the elite mercenary group. What is happening? He was clearly the muscle. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very clearly. <laughs> very grog of you. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're here. Mike, you Mike, make this. A little bit better. <laughs> this car glad Freya here too. <laughs> As you guys have your moment, uh, it takes another hour or so before you hear the sound of heavy footfalls and the key in the lock as the door is opened and a group of five or six uh, guards walk in and begin to unlock your cells and gesture for you all to come out. All right, you lot. <laughs> Your destination's here. Your final one. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Well, I'll remember we'll your be. face well when I return. Mm. I'm sure. 
Viscar apologize for smashing um, Bench. Viscar need bigger cell. Noted. Keep in mind. <laughs> just, they just oh grab God. you. They, they got two people grab up and grab Viscar by each arm and start to pull you out of the cell. Uh, each of you has one. Every everyone else has just one person, uh, and they begin to march you guys back up to the top of the ship. And as you march up, you begin to see the sprawling jungle for miles in each direction. You are at port at the edge of uh, a beach that ends bri briskly into uh, open field uh, where you see several places where mm -hmm. there were once trees that were cut down and forged into temporary housing. Large tents and stockpiles of goods, several trails of smoke as many campfires are uh, clearly lit throughout the encampment. And to your left, in the far distance on the horizon, you see what looks like some tall stone structure peeking out of the tree line along the coast. You have arrived at Exilos. And as the really? plank is drawn down to the, the docks, the ramshackle docks that look like they were handmade by the people here, you are marched down and you are met at the edge of the docks uh, by... One sec. Uh, you are met by a tabaxi man, a male, uh, a leopard-like face, uh, wearing what looks like stitched together leathers uh, and has a spear in hand uh, and as the guards march you down to the the the, um, the edge of the dock they just sort of give you all like a light push onto the sand and you guys all catch your footing and still shackled hand and foot uh, land in front of this this man in front of you who approaches and says welcome you are I'm assuming our new brethren here in Exilos. And he like pulls down the leather a bit and you see the same scar-like mark of an exile on his throat. I am Srali. I will be your guide for the first day. S-R-A-L-I, uh, Srali. Uh, he, looks to the, he looks to the guards and says, why are they still shackled? And you see the guard says, the guard, you see the guard looks to you all, looks to him, shrugs and says, lost the keys. Turns around and walks back up towards the the boat. You see Srali looks over the, hey, no, you, you can't do that. And he, he starts to walk up on the dock and you see three of the guards pull swords out and he just backs up a bit. So Viscar will get in front of him and kind of like with shackled hands, just put two big old paws on him. Claws, I guess, and he said, this car, no worry. Thrally. This we is fine. No, this is ridiculous. They've never left exiles shackled here. We don't have the tools to break them out of this. That's your problem, really mate. Like and they just sort of, <laughs> they just sort of walk back to the boat, swords drawn, as if waiting for Thrally to do something. And when he mm. finally backs off, they sheathe their weapons and get back on the boat. And you see Thrally turns to you for well, uh, sorry about that. I, this is unusual. They've, they've never left exiles with processed steel before. Silver well, lining when we get this off of you, these could be made into some pretty good tools or weapons. We haven't had anything like this in ages. <laughs> um, we'll have to get you over to Alu later and maybe he can figure something out. Uh, I tire see, like, of wearing these shackles. Okay. And I'll misty step out of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you misty step, and the shackles fall to the ground next to you. You see, as you misty step, he looks to you and like takes a visible step back, uh, as you teleported in front of him. And he's, you see, he like looks around as if he's gonna be struck by lightning. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Okay, well now I see why you were probably in exile. Uh, try to keep a low profile if you can. Doing things like that here will spook some of the people. But that's effective. Um, he looks to the rest of you, like, apprehensively. If any of you can do that, do it now before the people see. No, I can't. 
Um, I'm gonna try. Um, let me see. Let me, me see if I have. Mind. I might have to change my thing again. <laughs> I was gonna say you did just tell me you just changed your discipline, so uh, just keep in mind. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have my my focuses. Um. um well, first, before I change. Oh, this, actually, that's I'm a gonna, that's a that's a oh that's uh, a question, Mike. What? My points. Does Misty Step require a component? It doesn't require a. Does every spell require an arcane focus? No. Okay. Mm -mm. It just it's just verbal. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 You're good. You're good. Okay. Uh, also, just keep in mind, um, until you do find a spell component pouch, you do have blue aura. That's you could spend aura points why. to yeah. circumvent the need for components. Yep. Uh, thankfully. Um... If there's a question, on, if there's a question on the value of a component, just let me know, and we'll work out the aura cost. Yeah, that that's way. fine. But um, yes, Gregor, uh, you're. Um, I I'm just going to, uh, before I switch. Again, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> again, uh, I'm gonna do that for myself. Okay. Uh, let me take a look. Ah, you're gonna you're gonna spend five psi points and restore vigor to remove your exhaustion. Very nice. So Gregor stands there for a second, you close your eyes, and there's like a light shimmer, and then you feel a lot lighter as the exhaustion oh, leaves you. Feels better. All right. I cannot. So uh this. remind me, what is the requirement to switch your um your action. focus? I just it's just a bonus action. Is there any limit of times you can do that per day or anything uh, I should yes. be aware of? Or it's uh, I have it under psychic focus. Uh, psychic focus. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, uh, yeah um, I just gotcha. have a total of nine. But now Number of times equal to your int plus proficiency. Okay, so you've got a, a few good few times you can do that per day. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. All right. Um, yeah. I have so many spells. And... Um, does Sorali have, like, out. any, I guess, a fine, something that I could use as a thief's tool, like a lockpicking picking? Uh, I mean, he has like a necklace that looks like 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 fangs and teeth and claws. Like, uh, he has. Uh, give him, give me, uh, give me a perception check. Give me a quick perception or investigation, whichever works for you. Perception. Eleven. Uh, Eleven. Uh, quick, quick perception over his body. He looks like he's got a number of like, uh, like sawtoothed stone knives. Um, it looks like he has like a, like a bone spear in his hand. Like it's it's made. It's a like, bound together bones with one sharpened to a point uh, a lot of like makeshift weapons and arms here most of those things are probably too big to really pick a lock but there's a few like tinier teeth and claws that maybe could but you're not sure as far as like what could replicate an entire thieves uh, uh, uh kit is thieves tools not really you might need to find something in, in exilos for that this car have question for thrally also, uh, Viscar is six foot ten. Um, oh so God! He's standing to his full height. <laughs> You're a big Dude. bastard. Yes. Uh, not question that was statement. Uh, mm. may I may Viscar borrow teeny tiny teeth for a minute? Uh, give me a persuasion check, or just diplomacy, or whatever we're looking at persuasion here. Persuasion at disadvantage, three. Three. He's, <laughs> you see, like, he, he gets a little defensive. And backs up. These are, unfortunately, precious to me. I apologize. These are trophies of my accomplishments. I promise you, we'll get you to a loo, and he will figure something out for these shackles. Uh, okay. This car understand tiny but, accomplishment. But we have to do we have to do something first, and if you're going to do anything about these shackles, magic key. You see, as he says that, like it almost sounds like he's gagging over the word. <laughs> then do it now. Do it now right. while no one else is here. All right. Uh, so Gregor, are you. I'm gonna see what I have. I I'm gonna have to change it again. You'd have to probably switch to your nomadic step again, and yeah. then would use your one of your crazy nomad step stuff. Yeah. Um, you could, yeah. uh, you could use there and back again for two side points. Yeah. No, you could just use step of a dozen paces for one side point to teleport 20 feet. Yeah. You just do that. One side point. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll okay. have to change the thing, but then. You'd have to change your disciplines back to that. Yeah, yep. that's true. Yeah, that's what okay. I'm doing. <laughs> so you, 
Gregor takes like a second, like just like a blink, <sighs> changes the 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 uh, focus to your nomadic step discipline, and then t- teleports like just five feet to the side. The shackles <laughs> fall to the ground. You see, he again like startles, but like. T- like looking at the sky, he really like looking at. The, I I know, I know. Sorry, just don't do that too often in camp, please. This is oh, this is already right. so bad. When he looks to the sky, the scar will go boom. <clears throat> Try to you know. And, yeah. And, <laughs> 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 <He's scarred. laughs> uh, I see. We're all going to be very fun. Relax, me and the big guy can't do any of that magic shit. Well, that's good at least. All right. Well, now that you're. This is, I'm guessing, the best we're going to do. Magic is quite like he... useful, is it not used at all over here in Exelos? He he gives you like a a a, a look, like he's trying to discern if you're serious. Like, I thought you were all knowing. Uh, no, there's not too many. Any of, the... from what I know, most mages who break law in Bardest are either executed or sent to the arena. I think exile for mages is rare at best. There's not much redemption seen in the arcane, I believe. He, he, you notice, um, Kefella, give me an insight check against this guy yeah. if you like. I would love to. All right, it's not horrible. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ten. Mm-hmm. He looks scared of you, is the best you could say. It's not 100% what it is. You feel like there's something you might be missing, but fear is the closest equivalent you good. have. Yeah, it's, I think if I was satisfied. <laughs> uh, yeah, he looks wary of you, for sure. Um, a little bit of Gregor as well, but mostly <laughs> Kefella. Um, okay. I feel right uh, at home in here. It's well, great. if... Nothing else. <laughs> he, looks, he looks to Viscar and to Freya... Are you two, uh, is this the best you guys got for those? Like, like, hooks of the shackles. Is this about it? I mean, it's kind of breaking, breaking line, but, like, that's just so much work. All right, well, good luck. And he begins to lead you guys back <laughs> into Exilos, uh, further into Exilos. Um, he says, before you guys can go see Alu, unfortunately, there is something of a tradition here for new arrivals. We need to figure out your role in the society you're about to join. And the only way to do that is at the rolling ring. This uh, got tired of being shackled. Uh, uh. Sorry, you were supposed to have them taken off beforehand. And you see, he does scoop up like Gregor's and Cafella's like, shackles and like keeps them like under an arm. And he looks almost like protective of them, as mm-hmm. based on his earlier comment, manufactured steel is really really hard to come by here and it's like you guys just dropped off gold ingots in front of him um Viscar approach this car carry river equipment not sobriety hold on a moment i'm gonna say that in his head in his head <laughs> i'm gonna roll with advantage then <laughs> you see he immediately stops looks his Reavers. Now it makes sense. How did a couple of Reavers get exiled? Let's just say our particular claim keeper is a giant asshole. Yeah. Because we were made the sacrifice. But he will rule that day. No traitor. Okay. Well, then maybe you guys will be fine even with the shackles, but you've got a fight coming up in a few minutes here, so prepare yourselves. <laughs> Are you telling me not to use my magic in this fight? I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying be careful if you do. I... You're going to draw all kinds of attention and not always good. This is going to be going to try to break your shackles for you. Oh, yeah. Thank you for you. I could uh, I only asked out. one thing from you, Misty. Yeah. Can I top off and she won't open her mouth? I'm sorry. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, I I'll see now. Away. I get it. I get it. Okay, it immediately took me a sec. <laughs> this scar see, you probably seen this before. Before. See her fangs. Yes, yes, the, the <laughs> vampire stuff. Very squeamish. Hurry took me up. A sec. <laughs> she won't bite you on the wrist. And deal. 
You see Srawley. Srawley looks like, like what he's going to vomit at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really weird people. We get it. <laughs> she deals seven piercing damage. And now she will try to break her chains as she flares to make this check normal. I'm assuming it's a strength check. Yes, it would be absolutely a strength check to break the chains. Because... So, Dampier bonuses. So that's a pretty good roll. Uh, that's plus my oh. strength, which is five, and then plus the seven damage I dealt. So, so plus it's what, a twenty, a twenty-one check plus seven. Yep. 28? Holy shit! Uh, good lord. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Freya, you walk up and you grab both the chains and just break them apart like one of the links shatters into pieces you reach down grab the ankle chains and uh Viscar the shackles are still on you but there's just chains great. dangling now Viscar have accessories <laughs> <laughs> they kind of match honestly they, they they actually kind of accessorize with Viscar's look Viscar have match yeah, can we say it? Freya broke her own as well uh yeah I'll, I won't require another roll you, you can just do that huh <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations! You guys passed the first skill <laughs> challenge of getting out of your shackles. Yay. That uh, was exhausting. And now I have fight. So, Srawley watches as two of you teleport out of your shackles, and one of you breaks the shackles with your bare hands. Uh, he also sees you drink blood of a companion. Like, oh no, she didn't drink blood. She drank psionic energy. Right, sure. <laughs> that too. Um, <laughs> he's... Srawley... He's not great right now. <laughs> um, he, he's keeping a distance from you guys, and it's like, well, it sounds like you won't have any problems in the ring, then. He's got to take the ring, ring, back. Like the arena. Um. <sighs> All right. Wait, got out of that. Uh, arena? Viscar, go to Arena? Yes! Yes, this is the uh, Exile's attempt. This is the let's Exile's go. attempt at recreating the Colosseum. Well, well. Hurry up, let's go. I Viscar see for the fight. first time Viscar the Beast and the Ice Queen will be in the same arena. Let's well, well. I need to have another roll to see if he recognizes you guys. <laughs> Nope, that's a natural one. He's never heard your names before. <laughs> He's been in exile for too long. Yeah, that's makes it. sense. Yeah. Yeah. We really have to. Do you know, this. I will admit, I did avoid any battles with you yes. during your time in the arena. <sighs> Viscar, no ice cream would have lost. <laughs> okay, let's go. Viscar, we're gonna, have, to fight. We're gonna have in fighting in the middle of this battle. <laughs> um, so as you guys. Uh, reach the center of exile the center of this encampment you find a large uh like maybe three or four foot uh recessed pit of packed earth surrounded by wooden stakes uh and a number of bonfires surrounding it where you see large haunches of meat uh game that has been caught being cooked it looks like an event like a very 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 rustic uh <laughs> festival of sorts there's logs pulled up for seating you see what looks like tapestries and like ro like rugs that you don't think were woven here by hand but they're extremely battered and torn and burned and singed um there's there are things that you see people like sitting on or leaning against that are clearly from society like barrels crates um some tables and chairs but they're all a very poor condition. You're not sure how they got them here necessarily, but they're not the best. Uh, and you guys do see uh, Srawley walks over to a large uh, Leonin man, like a large lion-faced maned man mm. uh, in looks like tribal leathers with like a large spear slung over his back. He walks up and says, um, Hunt leader, there are four new arrivals to Exilos. Uh, they are weird and ready <laughs> for their for their introductory fight see this man looks down at him and goes good and see what they're capable of what do you appraise them at 
he looks back at you guys from a ways. You probably can hear this conversation. Looks back to you and goes. He looks back to to the the, the Leonin man and says, uh, "Peak, peak level." Of course. See, we he are. just he just sort of like nods, and you see he grabs what looks like a couple of like rocks and like hands them to him, like hand these to, and he like whispers into his ear uh, a couple of names, uh, which. Even if you catch them, you don't know what the names mean, uh, signify. Uh, and he nods and heads off. Uh, meanwhile, this uh, large Leonin man walks up to your group uh, and appraises each of you in turn, looking you up and down. Mostly up. Mostly. <laughs> Mostly down. <laughs> so I have been told by my lieutenant that you are all capable. Top grade. Why, of course. I guess. We shall see. Welcome well. to Exilos and to Exile. I am the captain of the hunt, Horak. Horak. A oh, horse today. Uh, and he... A lot of horse today. <laughs> a lot of horse today? <laughs> what? <laughs> Horlack, got it. Horak, yes. Horak. Good lord. Definitely uh, not Pizane. Uh no, this does not seem to be the claim keeper Pizane. This is another Leonin. And you do see there are five or six other Leonin, male and female, scattered about, as it is a common race of Bardest. Lies, there's only one Leonin. <laughs> there's only one Leonin in the entire world. Yes. Yeah. No, you are actually very normal for your characters, but for the player's perspective, there is a mix of lizard folk, uh, Leonin, Tabaxi, Loxodon, Minotaur, oh. mostly bestial monstrous races? bestial races, as that makes up a lot of Bardest. Um, hmm. There are the occasional tiefling elf, human, uh, a couple orcs, um, but for the most, a, a good few, a good few Goliaths as well. Um, mostly the hardier or bestial races in Vardes. Uh, Leonin is a very common one to find, especially around battle. Um, this does not seem no. to be Pizane. No. <laughs> Got you with the bait swords, though. Mm, you did. <laughs> I, I... So me and Gregor probably stick out like a sore thumb. Uh... <laughs> I mean, like I said, there are a couple yes, of other yeah. types, but Gregor is definitely one you don't you don't see many gnomes in Vardes. Viscar is the smaller, most lighter at home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Viscar, a hundred percent. Like, there's a few other like dragonborn lizard folk around that, like, as they look at you, they give you that little like nod up to be like, <laughs> "Got your back nod. if you need." <laughs> you almost feel like there there are some like there there is like a. a Clicks or gangs, almost like you see a lot of tabaxis hanging with like the Leonin and other tabaxis, a lot of the dragonborn and the lizard folk hanging around together. There are communities here that form to watch each other's backs, and the one thing you notice that is unifying them all is the same red scar around their neck. Uh, but as uh, Srali goes around, you do see him hand like this little pebble, this little stone to uh, about five individuals throughout the camp. Fight squad. <laughs> and then he runs back up to you guys and uh he uh walks up to you five you four and hands each of you a stone. Uh, these are um signs that you are to it's it's a bit ridiculous, but it's it's ritual. If you're holding one of these stones when the hunt captain announces a battle, you must enter the arena. Uh do note, I notice you four know each other. This is a free-for-all. Um, you are free to prove your worth however you see fit. Um, be, take that as you may. And he like looks looks between you guys and is like kind of appraising to see which of you is going to kill the other first. Uh, he will also note death is a possibility. Uh, if you yield, however, we, are, uh, we do have an honor-bound agreement to uh, permit you to live. Uh, we don't want to lose any more workers or gatherers as possible, as we are a small enough community as is. Mm. But if you don't yield, we'll just take what you've got and put it to good use. Mm. And as he says that, you notice you don't really have a lot. Unless he's talking about 
other things, and you know, some of, some of the bones on his mm -hmm. his tire may not be animal bones. But what if my bones explode? What if your bones? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That is that is not. Question. Yes. If we yield before we get a stone. Uh, <laughs> this, this card take Gregor's stone. It's no yeah, problem. <laughs> You see, Srawley looks to to um, Horak, and, and you see Horak kind of like shakes his head. You are going to be here for a long time, little one. It is best to cooperate and to have some sense of community. You can choose not to fight, but you will be marked with dishonor and sent into the jungle. And you may survive to the best of your ability there. What little honor you have left. But, Exiled technically by the speaking, exiles. Damn. exactly, yeah. <laughs> if, you cho if you don't fight, if you don't go through, like, the initiation, they will not deal with you much like no one else will deal with you. 100% right. true exile at that point. He, he, does look you the, he does look at you in, you in the eye, down pretty much, because he's, like, six foot five, at least himself. He looks down and says, however, the one currency we have as exiles that is more valuable than any other is freedom. You are free to choose as you'd like. If you wish not to partake, the jungle is yours. But we will not lend you any aid from henceforth. Uh, he he kind of like... So... <laughs> he weighs the options! <laughs> yeah. So, what's this extra stuff consist of? Of your assistance? Food, shelter, a share in the hunts. As long as you pull your weight around here, you will be fed. Oh, that's not very hard. <laughs> you scarred lot of pulling to do. I can see that. All right, I'll take part in this ritual. We are honored to have you. As you should be. Hmm. Uh... Kefella, if you want, you can give another. I feel like we have to ask this a lot. You can give an insight as well. <laughs> uh, see, geez. we got eight. Uh, he's looking you up and down. You think he's into you a little bit? Oh god, disgusting. <laughs> he like he, has, he furrows his brows as you say that. Like, I'll use. You. Uh, uh. I'll use you as a stool later. <laughs> oh god. Oh lord. It's all he's worth. Oh, I like her. I like her a lot. <laughs> it's a good group. So, uh, uh, as you guys, uh, as you guys are walking down towards the center of the ring, as uh, Horak walks over to a large stone and grabs what looks like a uh, a long, long like log with a heavy stone tied to the end, kind of like a, a makeshift hammer. He smashes against the stone and makes this loud cracking sound, which causes everyone to go silent for a moment. And he raises the hammer and says, Battle! Commence! And you see a number of people begin to stand up who have these stones handed to them and begin to make their way to the ring. And you see Srali looks to you for, That's your cue. Break a leg, or 12. Very well. So the that the words <laughs> this is how the psionic fevers do what they do best are we going free for all no that's that. on you that. Gregor just asks I uh, will. Like, I, you know I don't want to be paced <laughs> I'll use a use of psychic whispers um, okay um, and then for let's see I would for three like hours to... um, we can all talk to each other in oh my my God. God. <laughs> you yes, just a, a, a telepathic network between you Forget four. It. That's amazing. Um, For how long? Three hours. For three yeah. hours. Oh, oh yeah. Hey. And we can both do that. <laughs> oh, nice. Something. Yep. Um, so you guys now can speak in mean, your minds to each other. I'll be doing that. Mike. Yes. I'll have to expend a. A little bit. I'll have to expend one point of decay because I don't have any material components. Um, it's just a cured piece of leather, and I don't have it, that. So just one uh, point of aura. Well, I will say, if you want to do a sleight of hand, the two people in front of you are both wearing cured leather. 
Hmm. One of the things here that you could absolutely find is cured leather. Okay. I only need a small piece. <laughs> you you feel up Horax like like chest a little bit. Oh. And he 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 gives you a weird look that you take again as him being into you, but he takes a step back and is like perhaps another time. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll step back. I'll expend a point of aura um, so that I can get the material component to cast mage armor on myself. <laughs> Good thinking. A, a shimmering shell of armor appears around you. Uh, Horak does look perturbed as you do this. He mm -hmm. looks over to Srali, and Srali goes, They're weird, I said it. <laughs> yeah, we're... Okay, give me a not ass ac not ass is pretty good so uh one sec and i will yeah oh, of course we have maps give me one sec it's only uh, it's only so 15 I... but it's better than 13 so many tabs. or sorry 12 so many tabs 12 oh my God. 12 if i don't have mage mine's armor 13. Oh, mine's 15. um greg nor is going to be trying to perception to see what everyone's weapons yep, are. Yep, 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 yep. I will get you guys the visual on your enemies shortly. That one, that one, that one. I don't um, need that. Mechanical question, Mike, because it'll yes. come up eventually. Is the wisdom save made before or after I use it? Let me take a look, because I know exactly what you're referring to. Um... It is after you cast it. Yes, it okay. is. So once you've casted such a thing, then you have to make the save, and okay. the results will happen based yep. on stuff. Okay. So, um, I will pull us into the map real quick, and I will describe the people you see walking down into the ruling ring <sighs> alongside you. Good boy, Pisin. You see, uh, what looks like six individuals. It seems along with you four, for a total of ten in this ring. Uh, to the uh, Starting from the left, moving around, there is a large uh, Goliath man uh, wielding what looks like uh, two hand axes. Uh, and as he walks up, he is ritualistically carving into himself with the axes. Each one is made of what looks like the thigh bone of a massive creature that has been carved into the shape of a curved axe serrated edge um this one here is another goliath or the two to the left are both look like goliaths and as they look at each other you sense that they know each other to an extent uh and this one up here uh as he walks down he has what looks like a log with uh serrated stones that have been like punched into it to make a large great sword like weapon almost like you know what? No, it's more like shark teeth pointing oh. down the edge of the sword as he has this massive weapon over his back. And they each kind of like nod to each other and then look away as you feel like there's maybe like a, uh, a, a an alliance between those two on the left. Uh, moving uh, clockwise, we will find you see a Leonin man. This boy. Uh, not in the clothes and armor in this picture. He is wearing what looks like uh, leather rags of sorts, uh, just slung over one shoulder for modesty's sake. There is a loincloth. Um, and he does not have a fancy maul. He has uh, what looks like a large bone club of sorts, like almost functions as a makeshift maul. Um, and he has one thing that is very unusual for an exile, much like Gregor's bandana. Uh, he has a single bead tied into one of his locks of hair that somehow he seems to have managed to keep in exile. And you see, as he walks up to fight, he does kind of thumb it in like a worrying way and looks around between everyone here. And his eyes do sort of settle on you four for the most part. Uh, moving around clockwise, there is what looks like an ogre, uh, yes. large yeah. and lumbering. <laughs> yeah, as he just... Like steps into the arena he is holding a massive log by like <laughs> two of its two of its branches as if it were like a battering ram yeah. 
no, no, no extra like affection. It, he may have just plucked this out of the ground before walking over. You feel like, um, moving clockwise around here, you see what looks like uh, an elven woman, live and very much the most unusual of the the, the exiles here. Um, Gregor. Can I get a perception or insight from you? <laughs> sure. Uh, perception or insight? Uh, yeah. The same. Um, do I get? No, I don't think I get. Um, you can flare if you want for advantage, but that's about I it. I do want flare for advantage. Okay. I, so I have to we have hey, white auras today, which is going to be very useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too. And okay. I think I think at least one of them knows Aurora Light, so you guys are Both golden. Oh. oh, you guys are golden <laughs> on one decay. Do perception. You said perception. perception. Okay. Yep. Yep. Perception can work. Nash. Eleven. That's it's Nash. pretty average. There is something very familiar about her in a way. Um, okay. you can't you can't place it a hundred percent, but you you have a hard time keeping your eyes off of her specifically amongst the others here, as she has what looks like a actual like looks like a real deal longbow across her back, not like a crappy makeshift one, but a legit longbow, hmm. um, and like in a a, a and a quiver of arrows at her side, and uh, she has, um, unlike most of the elves you've found probably in the outer for the party's sake. Um, she's not quite as lithe and like ephemeral. She's a little bit more sturdy and muscular and has like a darker skin tone uh, and like darker, thicker hair. Uh, still the elven grace and beauty you're familiar with, but she seems to be like a sub species of some kind that most of you are not familiar with. Gregor, there is something about it that does tickle mm -hmm. the back of your head. Uh, and then lastly, we have uh, what looks like uh, actually a human. Um, like a squat human uh, down here with what looks like a tribal shield of sorts and a long wooden spear. Uh, and these are the gathered warriors for this fight. And as you see these now with you four, ten warriors gathered in this ring, I think it occurs to all of you that this is, number one, to test your abilities, to see how you'll stand in, in, the, in the, 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 the new society you've joined, mm -hmm. to see if you can become a hunter or a gatherer or a crafter or what your role will be. So it's also for fun, because everybody around you starts to uh, dip into these large barrels of something you can't quite tell, <laughs> and uh, chunks of meat... And Which begin way? to have a good old time as they begin to cheer uh, for you, Ten. And as you all stand here, <laughs> as you guys stand here and look about your your opponents, they are all, all of them readying weapons, hefting their massive stone or wooden tools, slinging an arrow or pising, like rolling his shoulders. You see uh, their auras begin to flare one by one as they get ready to fight and uh, Horak in the back raises the hammer again begin and slams it down the stone for another thunderous roar and I need everyone here yeah. to roll initiative yeah baby yeah, yeah baby yeah. <laughs> what? that's not the one don't Sorry, use don't magic Got it. Use it magic. Way. Use magic. <laughs> uh, 12. Oh, God help us. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think they get... No, I don't. Uh, AJ, what's your what's your tiebreaker dex? Because I feel like it's higher than mine. Yeah, Gregor goes first. <laughs> Gregor. <laughs> then me. Fuck yeah, that's what I want. Oh. AJ, what were you saying? Three is gonna score fourteen dex. Oh, uh, we need to roll off to see if me or Freya goes first then, because <laughs> we would both have nineteen point fourteen. Uh. Yeah, I guess so. So Freya and Kefella give me a d20 roll. Uh, Let's see a 14 mm. for AJ and a 14 for Kefella. Oh you both God. rolled exactly the same. Roll again. A six. Freya's lazy. 
you go first. <laughs> okay. Okay, you yeah. allow it. So we'll just keep it as it is in the order here. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gregor, somehow, <laughs> the least interested in fighting is the first one to go. So, Gregor, as, as this stone-on-stone stone strike sounds out, everyone immediately, like, rushes forth. You have the first initiative chance to do so. So, Gregor, what do you do? It's an action to do it. Um, who all had wood weapons again? Uh, oh. this guy to the right of you had a wooden spear. Uh, the elf had a wooden bow. And this guy's was bone, but this guy's had basically wood and shark teeth sword. Wasn't oh, and the ogre's was just a log, log. of wood. Yes. <laughs> so, wood. four out of six of your enemies have wooden wood. weapons. Great. I'm going to be spending some side points to do uh -huh. Yep, snap, crack, shatter. How many psi points would you like to use? Well, it's per uh, weapon, I believe. Per weapon, I believe. You can use it to make one wooden weapon per psi point spent. Uh, so oh my target. God. Yep. Let me let me check on range if there is like a range wow. on this. Yeah. If there's any way to sense range. That's just gonna. <laughs> Yeah, when she told me she was doing dendrokinesis as her mastery, I was like, oh, boy. So <laughs> Nice bow you have there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a log you're using as a club? It's, it's, it's sight. It's basically within sight, like within what you can like determine, because it's basically using your mind to do this, yeah. as you are using dendrokinesis. No, uh, I'm not so... doing it on the elf. Okay, okay, so... The guy to the right, I'll just I'll just give you their enemy names. The gladiator to the right has a spear and shield, both made of wood, mm -hmm. which you can target shield, but it takes twice the side points. The, um, yeah. the ogre has one. So if, if you're looking, if you're if you're doing the shield, we're at three, if not two. Uh, the Goliath over here has uh, just the one weapon. So four if you're doing the shield, three otherwise. Okay. Uh, how many points are you spending? Um, three or four. I'm going to let him keep his shield. Okay, so, so three. three. So you're going for the spear, the trunk, and the great sword. And they have to make a con save, just a flat number. Now, what is your save DC as I'm a save psionic? save DC is a 17. <laughs> oh my god. So they have to roll a 17. Okay, we're going to do three rolls here for gladiator. Nope. Oh. Uh, the ogre. Nope. <laughs> it's the Goliath. The Goliath <laughs> makes his save. Uh, so the ogre and the gladiator, as soon as you start, uh, Gregor, what does it look like as you, you just, you just like whip your hand out or like, how yeah, do I you. I just whip my hand out and go like this. You snap. snap and... Oh my gosh. So as your your fingers as your fingers move in the snapping motion, the wood mimics the the motion of your fingers, and the the spear twists and then cracks in half. And uh, across the way, the wooden log splinters into pieces in the ogre's grip. And he like looks at it and goes, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> and you see uh, the the gladiator goes, "Oh shit! What the hell?" And they both look very confused. You see the Goliath? Look, looks like it was bending, and he, like, grabs onto it and seems to hold it. And he looks around as if he's trying to figure out, who the fuck's using magic? <laughs> uh, as he kind of can tell what's going on. Um, okay. Gregor, as the Goliath over there says who's using magic, you look over at him as he's the only one who succeeded, and kind of fittingly. You see he has a necklace of tongues and fingers. You know that oh. as a mark of the Silent Hall, a group of mage hunters from the capital city. Oh, good. Uh, and he seems to be aware that there's some magic shit going on here. Fantastic. And you know that the, the necklace is of tongues and fingers because it's symbolizing the taking of verbal and somatic components. Mm -hmm. uh, Gregor. Um, is there anything else? You, you still have a bonus and a move. <laughs> um, hmm. 
this music's mm -hmm. dope. Yeah, this is the Bardest battle music. Yeah. I like it. I love it very too. Very tribal. Yes, I was very glad to find it. It's called War of Rebirth. I love it. Mm. Ah. How appropriate. Yes, actually. <laughs> You have a lot, yeah. But just focus um, on the two disciplines you have right yeah, now, so it should help. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to do my wood chip armor. I was just going to say, that's what I was going to yeah. recommend. Uh, so you spend six Psy points to make sure to mark that, and you are concentrating on this, so mark yourself with a blue dot. Um, blue dot. And for up to one minute, small chips of wood. I'm going to say from the spear and the, 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 the log. The come to you and begin to float around you like circling Gregor as he becomes a little cyclone of wood chips that act as defensive bonus to give him resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And at that point, the people whose weapons have broken look at you and you feel like you've gained the ire of the Goliath Ogre and Gladiator immediately as they know you <laughs> fucked their shit up. <laughs> Alright guys, time to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> um... You can't leave the ring. If, if I notice, if you try to leave the right ring, here? yeah, you can do that. Like, as you begin to move back, these two, Srali and Horak, do step forward and kind of like yeah. put their spears across to the next. I want to. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Right, you see, and, uh, you see, as, as you do that, as Gregor, as you end your turn, nearby, you see Horak look to Srali and go, yeah, pretty weird. <laughs> and, uh, it is then uh, Huntress Abanu's turn. Abanu is, uh, she She looks at her, her, wooden, her wooden bow, looks to everything that happened, and grateful it didn't happen to her. Um, she is going to... <sighs> What's her name again? Uh, Abanu. A-B-A-N-U. Okay. A -A Abanu. Abanu is going to probably... She's going to target the biggest threat here first, usually. Because it is it is a free-for-all. And as far as she knows, the biggest threat here is Paizane. Oh, fair. Oh, fair. Uh, and she is going to... Her aura flares, and she's going to make a few shots. Oh, what color? Uh, her aura, let me check. I do have it written down. Sometimes I am prepared. <laughs> Banus <laughs> has a red aura. Okay. Mm. Uh, she's going to make... Uh, that's one hit. Uh, two hits. Okay, she is going to shoot twice. Uh, and... No crits, thankfully. Uh, deals 22 piercing damage. Oh, wait, I forgot. Her sharpshooter. Oh, <laughs> that is 42 points of piercing damage. Oh, God. Oh. Ow. As uh, two arrows <laughs> thud into Pizing. And, you know, these are real arrows. Like, somehow Abanu has gotten hold of not like like fat, makeshift fashioned, like real bow and arrow. Uh, uh. And for a moment, you look at her, and I think the four of you can realize that she's the most best equipped of them all here. Uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and you see Paizane does sort of <clears throat> take those hits and sh tries to shrug it off, but he's hurt. Uh, and she is then going to... She's going to run around here to the ogre and pat him on the back. And you see there's some sort of pact between those two. Hmm. Uh, Gregor it is, is yeah. yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys do see that as she runs back behind this ogre and, uh, she seems to whisper something in orcish to him and pats him on the back. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he just kind of looks over his shoulder and goes, <clears throat> and then looks back to the rest of you. Uh, it's this guy over here, uh, thankfully still having his weapon is going to run up to Pizane. As unfortunately he can't reach Gregor. <laughs> he wishes he could. Oh boy, does he. But uh, he can't. Oh boy, does he. <laughs> uh, and he was this one. Uh, 
Uh, yep, he's got that. Uh, he, he's going to go into a rage. Uh, and he's going to Reckless. Of course he will. With his serrated greatsword. Okay. Uh, that's a hit. Jeez. This dice box is really working, Chris. Um, <laughs> Yay. Chris. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Oh dear, that is uh, that is that is a couple of hits on old Pizane. I don't know this guy. <laughs> They're sturdy. Leonins are sturdy. <laughs> 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 really sturdy. Um, Pizane has not had the chance to rage yet, so this is gonna be yeah. full slashing. Full owies. So that is a total of 37 slashing damage. Mm. Oof, he's not raging yet. <laughs> nope, that is full damage. As this guy runs up and wham, wham, two cuts across the chest. Pizane with very minimal armor. He just has these two serrated slashes deep into his chest. Blood <laughs> splatters out across the ground. Um... And Pizane needs to make a con save. Oh. Which thankfully right. he's good at, but he's not raging, so just good old. Yeah. Good old 23. 23. He's fine. He seems to shrug off whatever that was. Right. Good for him. Uh, and that is the Goliath's turn. Uh, Cafella. Yeah, I'm just deciding with all my massive amount of spells. Um, yeah, I know. I know the feeling. Do keep in mind components, but you have blue aura. That's, so. Yeah, that's why I've been kind of looking around at mm -hmm. different things. Um, yeah, I have to throw one combat at you guys while you're still ill-equipped before you go around yeah. and gather your stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, this guy how, much, uh, how much... Because yeah, I want to show off. How much would you say um, a small crystal sphere costs? For aura, it's fifty points per decay, fifty gold per decay. Fifty spent. gold per decay. I'll say two decay. Okay. I will spend two decay to get the material component. Right. And I am going. It's just one target. Correct. Uh, yeah, blue aura is pretty fucking powerful. If in certain see. circumstances, this is being one of ah, them when you just okay. don't have your components. Um. Meanie, meanie, I don't like you. Uh, so I can... Big guy. Feelings mutual, I don't like him either. <laughs> All right, uh, so... I think I don't know Pizane. You don't. No? Um... You don't. None of you do. You <laughs> know there is... Reason? You guys know there is a Leonin claim keeper, but you have no reason uh... to believe he'd be exiled. So 60-foot radius sphere would be massive uh twice that 60 yeah. foot would be Keep this going. in every direction you could get everybody man uh yeah. it would be to here and then to there holy shit and then to there so okay. it would extend right. outside of the arena and would hit people in the audience i'll at move that point. it up one more so it doesn't hit um this car sure uh, what are you doing here you did hear where you said it's gonna hit people in the audience. Shh, what go. are you throwing here? <laughs> Freezing sphere. Oh. Okay. Oh, I do oh, need to see no. something. <laughs> you are just outside <laughs> of that guy's range for his innate casting of counterspell. Just Neat. outside of it. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, he's part of the Silent Hall. They have it built into their blood. Uh, mm. Okay, so... Okay, the target is a point of your choice mm -hmm. where it explodes in a 60-foot radius sphere of frigid cold energy. Every creature within the air must make a con save. So we're looking at Pizane, the Goliaths, both Goliaths, the Ogre, and Huntress Abanu, as well as, I'll say, half a dozen bystanders sure. in the audience yeah. cool cool mm -hmm. cool cool 
Uh, they don't like mages, DC right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Only perpetuating uh, the stereotype for DC, sure here. DC should be 17. I don't know why it's saying 15 there. Okay. Uh, I, I think that makes more sense for level 12. I was going to yeah. say I was, it was a pretty low DC. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think people will flare for this mm -hmm. when they see it. Uh, like, an orb of ice. I'm um, going to learn Pizane. why they call me the Ice Queen. Pyzane will not be. Uh, so, Pyzane first for Khan. That is a 19, thankfully, because he's an amazing constitution save. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, let me just look at the stats for our Goliath friend up here with the great sword. Khan save also actually about the same. Half as much damage. Oh my god, so... And he doesn't need to flare. There you go. We're good. Um, other Goliath down there has worse. He's not quite the same build as his Goliath brethren, apparently. But he did flare, so will... Doesn't matter. Even with flaring, he's going to take the full. Great. And he's going to like it. <laughs> uh, so I'll put one decay on him, and it did nothing. Mm -hmm. Ogre has a con. Okay, pretty Probably good. Pretty decent, good. Yeah. He's also nope. flaring. He does need to. Yep. And okay, flaring mm -hmm. mattered for him. Yep. And then Abanu, <laughs> she's not the most <laughs> constitutional. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's why she what? hid behind the her friend. The dexterous elf is, is that the highest con? Fail. Nope. She really does fail. She fails, even with the uh, the the points spent. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm just gonna roll six. Ten. Just oh, no, yeah, I'll, I'll roll. No, I'll roll. That's right, twelve. Cause they're all they're all flaring, flaring. About, twelve about, rolls. The him. human. Did you the manage one. to include him as mm -hmm. well? No. Yeah. It was here. Yeah, yeah he's. Yes, yeah. he is. <laughs> Holy oh my shit. My apologies. Gladiator has to roll too. That's, uh, yeah. hmm. He's gonna flare for fucking sure. It's a six um, level spell, guys. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> right off the bat. So we've got. Uh, the flare mattered for him, so he's saved. Okay. Yeah. So. Alright. Here's the uh, damage. And then I'm just gonna roll. Yeah, give me the damage real quick. 40. 40, 40 cold. Oh, so. Okay, so he succeeded, so that's minus 20 for him. Uh, Ogre failed, I believe? No, was, Ogre, no, he succeeded. No, Ogre was succeeded, fine. And then it was Abanu who failed. That's yeah. right. And I think this lower Goliath. Yeah, the lower yes, Goliath that's failed. Yeah. That's correct. Minus 20. And we know Pyzen succeeded. All I do is splinter some wood. Is minus 20. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I'm just going to roll... Uh, I'm just gonna make a couple uh, d20s here. Yeah. We're just gonna do flat d20s because I don't feel like making sure. up stats for six bypassers. So we're gonna do first person is two rolls, fail. Dead. Second person <laughs> lives. Succeed. Succeed. Yep. Succeed. Third person yeah. fail. Uh, no, succeed, no, succeed just barely. Succeed yep. just barely. Third per fourth person dies. Fails. <laughs> <laughs> Succeed on a 20 and Yay! 1. That's amazing. Jeez. And we'll just do this last one here. Succeeds on a 2019. Okay. So uh, you killed two people in the audience. Okay. Oops, um, it happens. Because they're, you, you're, we're going to say two gatherers who are not fighters are clinging mugs of something as they're like, oh, look at this amazing. Oh, my God. It's a wave of ice. And they're just both like frozen there holding their mugs. <laughs> Uh, and you see people like around, like, whoa, whoa, scatter back. There is now less less celebration as much as now there is a lot of confusion and fear around the arena <laughs> mm -hmm. as this massive spell has just poof, exploded out. Uh, you see, in the wake of it, everyone here is, uh, other than your allies, is covered in like a thin layer of like rime and frost as they like shake off what just happened. Um, Cafella, the eyes of the other six all fall towards you now. And you see the Goliath next to Pyzane, like, had pulled his sword back and was ready for another attack. Looks to Pyzane, looks back to Cafella, 
looks over his shoulder at the Leonin and says, If you have any honor, Keeper, we kill the mage first. And then turns back <laughs> to Cafella. Cool. Ah. <laughs> ah. Alrighty then, and I will... Um, Can you do that again? I will sa <laughs> saunter... <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean I did no Please. reason, just making sure I'm out of 30 feet of him. Um... <laughs> Why are you coming over next to me? What are you doing? <laughs> the two mages like, are next to each other. Yeah. I feel like she's coming closer to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Drinky drinks. And, um, mm. yeah. That is, uh, that's my turn, you know? All right. Freya. <sighs> oh, my God. <laughs> she says mentally to Casella. Really? <sighs> How am I supposed to, to pick sense. them and understand what they are against and that they should just simply give up and bow down to me as they belong? <laughs> they are nothing you know more Capella? than a, nothing more than a footstool. Give me an intimidation check with advantage, just real quick, for your grandstanding after you cast that spell, just to see how much of an effect your uh, boy has. So actually it evens out because you're exhausted. So oh, it doesn't so matter. Sure it's 12. That's true. <laughs> 12. There's enough. The audience is terrified of you. The fighters look pissed. So. Their ires on guys. her, not me. Okay, Freya. Pain in the ass. <laughs> Go do what you do. Yeah, yeah. Freya will rage. Okay. Some of you may die. That is a sacrifice Fuck. I am willing to make. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. Nothing personal. I just want to get this over with. As you will wear for advantage. He has a shield oh. that isn't broken. He does, he does have a shield. <laughs> so, yeah. plus nine to this. Okay. Uh, oh, so it'd be a 15. That will yeah. miss. Alright. Second attack. I keep forgetting I have to look at the webcam now. Uh, ooh. Uh, for like a 27, it looks like. Yeah, that's hitting. Okay. And because I have advantage, I get my sneak attack. Nice. Right, because you ugh, fucking rogues in my world are so broken. <laughs> Uh, right, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the damage on roll twenty. Yeah, I feel like that's fair. It's probably a lot of numbers. Mm -hmm. So, just ignore the to hit roll with this. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Ooh. As a psychic blade forms in my hand, it's <laughs> okay. That's uh, so that's twenty-two. So is that all psychic? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To psychic damage, uh, the blade like passes like through the armor and like strikes at him like in his mind, and he's like, oh, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" And his his <laughs> head has been shattered and got thrown and got pulled over into the armor of a gnome, and then this <laughs> vampire, it's like pale elf, runs up and like shanks him with a psychic blade after he's been covered in a layer of frost. This dude looks rattled. Uh, He's been fighting, going. like, wolves for the last three months, <laughs> you know? Oh, I actually can't do my bonus attack because I use my bonus action to rage. Ah, oh, yes, yes, that's true. That's true. Bonus economy. Uh, that is my turn. Okay. Uh, it is Pizane. Uh, Pizane, see, like, as Goliath, the Goliath turns and says, you know, if you have any honor keeper, we kill the mage first. The Goliath turns away to look towards Cafella. Pizane cracks his neck. Didn't you hear? Exiles have no honor. And he is going <laughs> to rage and attack the Goliath. I like him. I said uh, that earlier, didn't I? <laughs> he's going to attack recklessly for advantage. He did um, say keeper. Yeah, he did say keeper. Yeah, that's true. You guys would hear him say keeper mm -hmm. to Pizane. Um, um Considering Freya's prestige, this, would she be a, like good check of any kind to connect dots, I guess? Yeah, give me uh, insight or history. Sure. Go with history. Uh, no. 
because it's just disadvantage. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, you're not sure if you misheard, perhaps. Um, but you are looking, like, at, in his direction, I'm guessing, then? Yeah. Okay, He just, um, like, glanced over. <laughs> you would notice, as he enters into his rage, there's a very notable difference from your type of rage. For a moment, you see all of the hair on his neck stand on end, and then almost seem to, like, drift midair, as if underwater. Oh. Like, the hair itself is, is not bound by gravity for a moment. And then it seems to go back to normal. And you see, instead of, like, a snarl come to his face, he closes his eyes, and there's just, like, this dead focus. As he then raises his weapon and enters a different kind of rage than you're familiar with. Uh, mm -hmm. it's because Poison is learning. That's okay, he doesn't need that. <laughs> uh, he has yeah. not, unfortunately, he hasn't been raging, so he can't do that. Oh, that's true. Uh, I'll have to remember that for next time. I forgot I gave him that. Oh, well. Hmm. No big deal. He's just going to enter his rage, and he's going to just make uh, his two attacks with Reckless. Uh, he's using his makeshift maul. So we're looking at a 21 and a 12, unfortunately. So the 12 will not hit. The 21 will for 15. As he, like, whack into the lower back of this Goliath, who does, like, stagger a bit and seems, like, taken off guard. As Paizan is apparently not willing to align up with him. Um... Paizane is then... A wolf. I get it. Well, I know. <laughs> see. Uh, oh, yeah, no, right. Paizane is then going to move and impose attack of opportunity, incur attack of opportunity, which so the Goliath goes, son of a bitch, and swing back around. Uh, and that will hit, because AC being what it is. Um, well, he's, he's raging now. <laughs> yes, he is raging now. So it's not so bad. As the serrated greatsword cleaves through the air. Dealing 12 slashing half to 6. Uh, upon taking damage, though, he is going to activate Pain for Pain. Ooh. Uh, okay. He gains... Okay. He gains one stack of Pain for Pain. Ooh. As the... The strike arcs into him. He has no visible reaction and continues to move forward mm. as if it it hit him. And you see blood spray, but there's not even like a buckle or like a bend as he just continues to move forward like it didn't bother him. Mm. Um, the hardy one! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he is going to use his bonus action to take his hammer and Great. smash it against his side and use pain for pain again to give himself two more stacks as a bonus uh. by hurting himself. <laughs> so he takes... Yeah, he did. Oh, you are correct. He did. He did. So he can't do that. Thank you for remembering the action economy. So he doesn't take that extra damage. But he will do that next turn uh, as he is then going to move his full speed towards yeah. the center of the ring. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Make sure you uh, closer. It is the ogre's turn. The ogre. The, the ogre. Uh, <laughs> who doesn't have a ton of speed. Hey, I like that. Good. So he's going to uh, double move. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Lumbering this way. Um, he's running towards you guys, Lumbering. but it's his move. <laughs> um, Lumbering with no lumber. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Viscar, it is your turn. First thing Viscar does is let out a draconic roar for flavor, nothing else. Right. Okay. And then, as he does, um, he rages, and the black talons on his fingertips extend, mm. and somehow gets bulkier. Okay. Who knew? Who knew? And he will move up 5, 10, 15, and is going to tear into the person in front of him, reckless for a advantage claw yeah that will hit 12 slashing 
Okay. Um, second claw. It's part of his funness. Absolutely for... will hit. And if he's still up, he'll as he goes in for a second or a third attack, um, it it sec. manifests a, a green emerald psychic blade. And if Ooh. this hits sneak attack. Oh right. uh, yeah, 20. that absolutely hits. And then it's gonna. Is this guy looking shitty yet? Uh, a little, yeah. Action surge. Um, we'll do the end. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, he looks real shitty. If you're action surging. <laughs> action surging. Attack okay. Oh yeah. Uh, this guy, uh, how do you want to do this? <laughs> um. So claw, claw, psychic blade. Claw again, and just kind of on the last one, it's um, just scrapes across his chest, and there's like a forward, like downward momentum just shoving him into the earth. Okay, I have a question for Viscar. Yeah. Do you kill? Does Viscar kill? Ooh, um, I didn't think about this type of personality for Viscar. Um, mm. Mm. Uh, as the barbarian, as the, this this barbarian yeah. falls to the ground on his knees. There is like a small crowd over in this direction uh -huh. that uh, is screaming like, "Finish him! End him!" Oh, they seem to want blood. I have a um, question: In the arena in Bard in the capital, in the were, the, were the battles to the death? Some, I'd say most, but not all. There were there were different degrees of battles. Um, was remind me: Was Viscar a career pit fighter? Yes. 90% like, of your matches were to the death. All right. Um, I'm going to do my second attack against him then. Okay. Um, claw, claw. Uh, that, that hits. Two yeah, death saves. That's two and death then, save fails. Um, with my third claw, kill him. How do you kill him? <laughs> uh, just across where the dragon mark was. Across open the it. Yeah. yeah. You... Oh, that is, uh, that is a dishonorable death for an exile to be killed by another exile across his own exile wound as the scarlet floods out into the ground around you. The crowd goes fucking insane around this part. <laughs> uh, however, the Goliath over here goes, no! And he screams at you, Viscar. And the attention has for this guy has gone from Kefala to Viscar 100%, as you have just killed his blood brother. Yeah. That's fine. That's 15. Um, I'm going to keep moving towards him because I heard sound. 20, 25, <laughs> 30, sound. 35, 40. I'm going to go ahead and Aurora Burst uh, for a whole other uh, turn. Whole other turn? <laughs> whole other oh my turn. God! <laughs> yeah, let's go. Look, let's we're go. going. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to continue moving 5, 10, 15, right in the face, and we're going to do it all again. All right. Minus <laughs> action surge, but yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a clock. That is a hit. Uh, second clock. That is a hit. Um, another psychic blade whips out. Uh, the first one I just left, and then it dissipated in the right. other dude's chest. Here's another one. Um, <laughs> and then bonus action, psychic blade. <laughs> <laughs> he does oh, not damn. look as shitty as you'd expect from that flurry okay. compared to his brother he yeah. was way hardier this was the older of the two for sure <sighs> you see guy. as as you, you wail into him he takes a sec <sighs> my turn and that'll be on his turn Yeah, obviously <laughs> uh, his brother is dead I can remove him from the battle yep. uh, gladiator <laughs> Oh, so he doesn't have a spear. <laughs> um, Psionic reavers. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a spear, but hilariously, you left his shield. He does have a shield bash attack, and All he right. can multi-attack it. Yeah. So he's going to just poof, poof, poof against Freya with his shield. He's going to make a uh, three shield bash attacks with advantage because he's gonna he's gonna flare of course mm -hmm. uh 25 to hit yep like. <laughs> yes on that first one what do you have i'm going oh, to wow. reaction and cast silvery barbs god silvery oh. barbs all right must re-roll it <laughs> must re-roll right. and use the lower roll it, it was an 18 it is now 
a natural 20. So he keeps the 18, the lower okay. roll, right? And then a okay. creature of my choice gets advantage, gets advantage on their next attack. So okay. Freya, on your next attack, you have advantage. Okay. okay. <laughs> so still hits because I rolled higher, but uh, second attack is a natural 20. Holy shit. Damn. Okay. I'm going to not use you for a second because I feel a bit mean. <laughs> it's two in a row from that guy. Third attack is not going to hit. So, a hit and a crit. Now, granted, his shield bash is not his best hit. So, it's kind of good that one of them crit to equal out what he, <laughs> what he lost in his spear. Yeah, fuck these guys up. Sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was good. That was a great opener to the match. Nothing has set the mood of a exile match more than half of the combatants' weapons shattering in their grip. So. I don't want to fight! <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand those words! Uh, that is eight, blu eight bludgeoning on the first hit. I'm giving you them separate because separate, I know you're a barbarian. Yep, whatnot uh, stuff, so four. In case anything, in case anything changes. Um, and... Oh, it's doubled. Right. For the crit. 19 bludgeoning half to nine on the second hit. And uh, I need a strength save. Ah, I have raising. Two I strength saves. Advantage. Yeah, so give me two strength saves. If the first one fails, you don't have to get the second one. Success, and give me one more. Success. Okay. You are not knocked prone as he tries to <laughs> beat you down. Um, he is going to uh, action surge. For three more attacks. You're really sorry to tick me off. Uh, one hit. <laughs> Uh, does a 20 hit? I, I'm guessing yes. Yes. For you guys at this point. Yes. I wasn't sure if you had, like, shield, but you're not magic. Uh, no. three hits this time. No crits. So, that is, uh, eight bludgeoning on the first hit. Half to four. four. Seven, half to three. And eleven, half to five. And I need three more strength saves. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. As a success. As a success. Mm. And that is a success. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was <laughs> like, his. Pow, pow, pow. Is his friend. He's like, knock it off. Uh, <laughs> he is now going to aura burst <laughs> for <laughs> another attack. <laughs> fighters, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah fighters. Uh, three more attacks. Uh, that's a natural 20. Jesus. That is Please a support. 3 and a 4. <laughs> and that's a miss. Okay, so in his third in his third barrage of attacks, only one hit, but it is a crit. I gotta tell you, this guy, he, he's he's trying to get a promotion today. Um, so that is 8 have to 4. 8 have to 4, again. Uh, oh, it's the same hit, so that's... Right, it was double, so eight. You took eight total. So, okay. Uh, but that is his. He's now up to that much decay. Uh, is he just like looking at him, kind of bored, like done? It's literally, literally like nine ashes into you. Uh, I do need uh, one more strength save because he missed on the last two attacks. As a success, good lord. <laughs> Talking about my rolls, you can't roll below fifteen, apparently. Oh my god! I mean, not even, not even, really even, high. even, even your lower on the advantages were really good. Um, good. Jeez. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's you see, he's like a little bit tired. So I have my fucking spear. Let's go differently. No, I really he's wouldn't. Trying to. He's trying to be imposing, and he's really not. So uh, that is his turn. We're back to this full round. Back to Gregor. Back to Gregor. Um, okay. So Gregor, obviously that thing's getting closer to him. Um, several things, yes. Yes, several things. I need to look at my sheet real quick. Okay. 
I need to see how far away that person is from me. Me, 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 me. I forget how to do the voices. Oh, whatever. Okay. Um. I'm gonna like go right here, so I'm within her line of sight. Uh, okay. Her, uh, the, what's her face? Uh, Abanu. Abanu's line of sight. Gotcha. Um, I'm gonna. I don't know what kind of action this is. I'm assuming. Sure. It's... Um. Telepathy. Uh, you can uh, just speak. No, it's not even an action. You can just talk. Talking's a free action, and you can okay, do it. I'm gonna 120 telepathically feet. talk to her. Sure. Um, and just and say, I'm just gonna say one word or a couple words. Um, uh, mm -hmm. What's what's the name? The Lannan. You know of it? Uh, across the arena, you see her body tense for a moment as she looks around, confused, and then seems to like. Her eye seems to draw directly to you across the way. Uh, and her bow, like, goes slack a little bit. What do you know of Delenon? My family was from Glimmerford. I just say that. Uh, talking is a free action. She says, uh, does anyone here speak Orcish or Goblin? Uh, no. Nope. She says, uh, and just something in like a guttural language. The ogre turns to her and goes, like, like pointing to like the gnome. And you see she just goes, and the, the ogre, <laughs> you feel like it was going to come over and punt you like a, like a <laughs> football. And the ogre shifts attention towards Cafella. Seems like you may have won an ally in this fight. Hmm. <laughs> or two allies, really. Okay, great. I'm not obviously I'm not gonna attack him now. Uh, <laughs> um, hmm. um well I'm holding concentration. I kinda don't wanna jump back. Um hmm. <sighs> Don't know. That's so hard. Um, probably. No, I can't do that. Damn. <laughs> it's difficult. Okay. A lot of choices um, here. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Um. That's an ally now. The closest one to me would be where Freya is. And I saw the guy pushing against her. <laughs> yeah, he is attacking her. But yeah, um, she's not terribly... That would drop my concentration, concerned. though. So I can't do that. Oh, a new concentration. Yeah. Hmm. This is very difficult. <laughs> when I have concentration. I don't like concentration. <laughs> Um, I guess I'm just gonna try the snap, crackle, shatter again, cause on on who? On on the guys. On the shield. <laughs> okay, it costs twice. I'm back here for so many. So it costs two points for a shield, and he gets advantage on this because it's a shield, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. So he's gonna do two d20 rolls. DC is 17. <laughs> so this guy, he's bashing into Freya like, haha! I finally have a, and in one of the last bashes. It hits Freya, who I'm imagining is just like stoically, like uncaring. <laughs> and as he's bashing it, it splinters and shatters into just her view as he's like. <laughs> as he's like in slow motion now, unarmed, as Freya it looks so bored and it <laughs> smashes against her face and just splinters. <laughs> and he's, he's probably pissing himself at this point. <laughs> You should have done that earlier. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, is that your turn, Gregor? Um, is that technically an offensive thing? Would my concentration drop? Your me? concentration wouldn't drop from using offensive. Concentration only drops if you cast another concentration spell. spell. 
Right. right. Yeah, you, you okay. can. You, yeah, you can do a lot of other stuff while holding concentration. You just can't hold concentration on two different things. Two different things. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. I, You're good. That was that was my. Uh... That wasn't bad. You just took out an, an opponent. Basically, he can't fight now, <laughs> unless he uses his fisticuffs, which are not great. Slap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thumb war. Yeah, I guess. Slappy game. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, Briarger? Nope. Nope. All right. Nope. It is Abanu's turn, who uh, has not gained an alliance with anyone else but Gregor, so is going to turn back to her original target of Pizing. Hmm. Hmm. As he's charging Pizing. across the battlefield. No, no, of course you don't. <sighs> okay. Trust me, I uh, want him to laugh. It. He's really overperforming today. What the hell? No <laughs> crits, but still. That's a couple of hits there. Okie dokie. You're the boss, die, I guess. It's not even my new dice. It's just one of them's deciding to be better today. I'm sorry, your box is doing so well against Pyzen. It's the box. It's the box, yeah. Um. Jesus. Okay. Oh God. That's right. Sharpshooter. Oh God. It's an extra right. ten. Right. Uh, but right. does he still? Does and she still hit? Minus one of five the misses, to hit. One of the misses with a minus five. The two still hit. So it's an extra twenty damage though. Oof. So God. Sharpshooter's so broken. Sharpshooter's um, nice. <laughs> it is. That's forty-two piercing damage halved to twenty-two. One. Forty-two. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Mm. 21. Correct. Correct. I don't know if the extra point might matter. Mm. <laughs> like, um, might be my... healing on his turn with Thora. Uh, you guys see Paizane falls in the middle yeah. of the arena. Uh, yeah. Barbarian Rage, if he's above the 11th level. Uh, That's base see... Barbarian. I know, okay. I know. You see Paizane fall to a knee. And all of the, the hair you saw before that was kind of like floating begins to move almost erratically. Like his fur is bristling, but not stiffening. It's just flailing for a moment. And he uh. stands back up, barely conscious. Okay. Uh, as he's not going down just yet. Suck. Yep. Uh, yep, he needs to make a con save. First one should be pretty easy for him. He's good. Yep, he is good, Ooh. and he is at one hit point. Mm -hmm. I that. It mattered. It okay. Mattered. Cool, cool, cool. Huzzah. Uh, it is well. Yeah. Uh, this is that kind of fight. Uh, Abanu is going to. They or they burst. Burst. Yep. Woo! Abanu will aura burst to put Oof. Paizen down, best of her ability. Oof. Uh, and you see, as she pulls her arrow back, um, she kind of like her head swivels towards Gregor across the field, mm -hmm. and she says out loud in common, "This is for my home, Claim Keeper," and is going to shoot Paizen. Uh, that's with a sharpshooter. That is a hit. People are just thinking, he's like, well, if he's exiled, and that means he did something wrong, which is... Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, two hits. Her first will, will absolutely put him out. I'm not even going to roll because of one hit point, so I need to do a con save again. This time the DC is higher with Relentless Rage. Mm -hmm. It is now DC 15. Flash of wow. So the third hit will put him down again. Is now DC twenty. Did he flare for this? Uh, no, he can't. Oh. Uh, you have not seen his aura this whole fight. <laughs> As he fails his third save at DC twenty, <laughs> and he does go down. Not dead, Shit. but unconscious. Relentless oh, Rage is Rel 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 Relentless Rage is, is great, but it does get harder and harder and harder uh, until like eventually it's nearly impossible. Um, 
And you see, she shouts something out to the ogre in Goblin again, and it seems to point to Paizane's body. Oh no! Uh, it is oh, the no. Goliath's turn. Hi. Hi. <laughs> he's going to. Uh, he's going to recklessly. Yeah, he has he's the gonna... advantage to hit me too. Oh, already. Reckless, anyways, because I'm reckless. So, yeah. yeah. Then he's just gonna make his three attacks. Hit me, bruh. Okay. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Uh, twenty-nine. Somehow this is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and a natural twenty. Cool. Good lord, am I AJ tonight? Um, <laughs> so it is two hits at a crit. Yeah. The damage will be halved. From raging and whatnot. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Where's my other D6? Uh, 17 slashing, halved to 8. And the crit is... Twenty-six half to thirteen slashing, and I need a con save. Two con saves if the first one f uh, succeeds. Okay, I'm gonna flare for advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oop. Wrong way. There we go. Constitution. Twenty-five Succeed. and so eighteen. Eighteen just succeeds. <sighs> okay, uh, that is gonna be. Uh, I need a Martin to check. Does he have burst? No, he does not know burst. Oh, good. Okay. That's not one of the ones he has. Shoo. Not everyone has burst, believe it or not. <laughs> it's so good, why wouldn't you? But uh, all right, uh, that is his turn. Uh, Kefella. Did she say the claim keeper thing in common? She yes. did. She said, uh, this is for my home claim keeper and then put Pizing into the dirt. You all heard her loudly Do proclaim I... that. I... History check to recognize who Paizane is. History or insight? Alright. I'll uh, say. We'll see both the effect. Because of exhaustion. exhaustion. 17. 17. As she says, this is for my home claim keeper. You're not sure what she means by her home, but you hear the word claim keeper and you you perk up. You're like, claim keeper? There's a claim keeper? What the fuck? Why is there a claim keeper here? A claim and keeper, you say? You look at Paizane and you know there is a Leonin claim keeper. Uh, his commonly his his title is the Crimson Lion, and he is a red Leonin in front of you <laughs> on the ground now. Uh, you make the connection pretty quick. There is a claim keeper in this arena. The claim keeper of Susail, specifically. A claim keeper would be a great person to hold as a pet. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Elf! I don't know if I can stay my hand much longer. Leave this claim keeper alive, and I may spare yours. Otherwise, I don't know if I can restrain myself. What say uh, you? Allow him to be my pet. Give me a persuasion Sorry. check with disadvantage. Oh my god. That is already disadvantage. You're ridiculous. <laughs> uh, however, Gregor. Give me a persuasion check with advantage, which will cancel out the disadvantage because of what you telepathically no. just said. Right, so normal. So normal. Wait, yes. but Gregor doesn't have exhaustion. That's. Oh, you're right. So you actually have advantage. That's correct. You're the only one who doesn't. Yay. Yay, me. Uh, yay. Hey. <laughs> so, Kefella, this is hilarious. Kefella, you say this out loud. You think. You were the best. Kefella believes she 100% is the best at this, mm -hmm. at, at diplomacy. Yes, of course. Because what really convinced her was the telepathic message I just got privately messaged mm -hmm. by Gregor with a natural 20. But you see Abanu looks to Paizane, looks to the ogre and says, Don't kill him. You see ogre goes, Oh, come on, I can't kill anyone now. You can still kill her. Pointing to Kefella. <laughs> oh no, you're not touching me. And I will point my left hand towards the giant creature. Okay, what are you doing oh, with that no. hand, buddy? What are you doing? I need... What are you doing with that hand? I, and I will have to add the bonus damage. 
Uh huh. Which one is this? I've got the map. Oh, oh we're, yeah. we're we're going all the fun. You're here. going all in. All the fun. I need a Constitution saving throw. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. It's pretty decent, but still. Shit. Okay. And you shall die. It's gonna die. flare. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think that still succeeds. I believe that will make the save. Yeah, it's a DC 18. So they will take half of this. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, what are you <laughs> doing? Uh, you all watch as Kefella point, points with this emaciated, almost mummified hand towards the ogre, and almost like a thin, sickly green ray strikes at the ogre's chest. And he <gasps> life saps from this massive form. As he manages to hold hold on and not, uh, that would have absolutely killed him where he's at right now. Um, <laughs> he manages to hold on. Kefella, I need yep. uh, wisdom save 14. So you made it? Kefella. What's oh, my shit. suggestion? Yes. Um, you look at your hand for a moment. Yes, that's that's the correct course of action. Yes. Paizan oh, would yeah. make a wonderful pet. And you seem convinced that it would be better if he served you in undeath. And you feel like the hand could make that happen. Oh my god, no. You are compelled, under suggestion, to kill Paizan. And then let the hand have its way with his body. Oh god. Mm. Oh my. Now, per the suggestion you... spell, it's not domination. Correct. But Good thing you already used your action. <clears throat> you are charmed, technically speaking. The an the action must sound reasonable, which I think Takafella does. Um You must pursue the course of action described to the best of your ability. So as this I could have done that exactly if I used that ability on Pi Z. Correct. That you seem to feel like that's what it's saying you should do, but you don't have enough charges left. Correct. Oh, thank God. So perhaps <laughs> I'll keep that suggestion of undead for later. for later when charges are back. Correct. This is a little thing to remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll keep can that I, in can my I mind. Can we do an insight? Can we do like a check on seeing? Because have we seen this thing before? No. No, no, I don't think any of you are keenly enough aware of what Kefella has. Okay. Uh, and as far as you're concerned, Kefella just did incredible damage to an enemy and then just admired her hand for a moment. Hmm. What the hell? They're on our side! <laughs> what do you mean? This one should not be touching me. If this one touches me... Let's get back! Kefella, as you're... As you're saying that, there's a voice in your head that says, that is correct. We are above them, above all here. This one in front of me, looking up towards the giant to the ogre. ogre, is only good as a footstool, nothing more. All right, Kefella, is there anything else on your turn, you wicked, uh, wicked ice queen? No, um, uh, so, mm, question. Uh, mm. So that is, when you can only cast one spell in your turn, does that count spells from items? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Because you're still casting the spell. Okay. Yeah, does, the item is per it, exactly the item is permitting you to use the spell through it, okay. but it, you still have to actually cast it. Okay. Um, but I can still do a cantrip. If it's a bonus. If I spend. Because you don't have a second action. Yeah. If I spend you the aura do. to quicken. Um. Yes, you could quicken a cantrip, but I suppose. That would to be, a bonus. I don't have, so that would be... Nope, okay, that's my turn. All right. Uh, Freya, you have a very terrified gladiator in front of you. Yeah, she can really, like, stop paying attention to him ever since the whole uh, announcement of the claim keeper. Yeah, fair. Uh, huh. Don't hit the ogre guy! Uh, see, instead of ignoring the human, he can attack if he wants. <laughs> I'm I don't hitting know if he can. silvery barbs. 
No, no, no. You're she's her not... next attack. Yeah. Oh, her next uh, attack. Yeah. Okay. All right. good. Yeah. Um. Raise yeah. next d well d twenty that they want. So it, it, it can right. be a skill check save into or attack roll. Does he even have the ability? You know, I mean, no. He's. You see the gladiator puts a hand up. I yield, and he's gonna uh, leave the fight basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, Freya will kneel down to Pizane, seeing as one of her companions have explained interest of keeping him, and she will aura heal him with aura light. Okay. Uh, Freya, mm -hmm. give me a wisdom check, or wisdom save, rather, my apologies. Oh. Hey. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm assuming she's not aware of it, so I can't flare. Yeah, I'd say that makes more sense. You wouldn't be aware that this would be something you'd have to worry about. Sixteen. Okay. okay. Um. You touch Pizane to flood your aura into him for a moment, and almost reflexively with your telepathic abilities, you seem to tap into a deep, deep, dark, never-ending hole. A consciousness that is expanding at an infinite rate to a point where it causes you to go slack-jawed for just a moment, and you feel like you could stare into it infinitely. As something... There's something in Paizane that you've never seen before. She quickly retracts her hands. What the hell was that? Uh, how much did you want to heal him for, though? <laughs> she was only going to spend 2 k which is actually 2d10 with Aura yeah, Light. It sure is. Give me 2d10. <laughs> that is 11. That's a d... Pizane. That's a d8. That's oh, that is... Oh, is that one's a... Yeah. Oh. One of them is a d8. Give me another <laughs> roll on that. 7 plus... Nine. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, sixteen. So a few more points. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Paisen does <clears throat> wakes up suddenly. Uh, and Freya, as you pull back and he wakes up, you feel that consciousness fade. Whatever that connection was, it seemed to only be there while he was unconscious. The moment he comes back to consciousness, it's <laughs> gone. For a claim chief, where you have a very odd mind. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Mm. Claim Keeper, rejoice! I guess everyone fucking knows now. <laughs> he seems to be groaning. She will then look to uh, the elven woman. So, are we still fighting? And she like side glances the younger. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> it's vintage. Yeah. Oh, not bad. 14. Pretty good. 14. 14, okay. Banu looks to, uh... Banu looks to Freya and Paizane and looks over to Gregor and then saw what Kefella did to the ogre. <laughs> Not to you. Looks over to Viscar, though. That one's still up for grabs. Uh, if you continue to attack him, I will destroy him. She points to the ogre. I mean, this isn't to the death! Abanu looks to Freya, says, Your companion has killed one of us. He looks over to Viscar, and you can see the pool of blood underneath the Goliath in the distance. Yeah. You've if, if, if my companion, pointing to the ogre, dies in battle valiantly, so be it. We are exiles. You make your own choices. Uh. Anyways, that's uh, that's the result of that. <laughs> so, Freya, what are you doing? Well, she's, she's claimed she's going to keep attacking her only friend here, so... Yes, she has. 
Freya will turn to the ogre and attack. Okay. Successfully. Uh, all right, uh, plus nine, so it's 21 to hit. 22, actually, yes, absolutely. I love this dude of damage in the... Damn, didn't expect to fail the first roll. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I'd get away once. Twenty-one. Psychic. Okay. Sorry, what was that, Chris? You said. I thought I'd get away with once, but no, immediate. Oh yeah, no, immediate <laughs> uh, consequences. Love it. Immediate consequences of your actions. I love it too. You gotta love it. Is the ogre still standing? Yes, it's an ogre. Okay. Has a lot of hit points. It's still, that. it's very low now, especially after the finger of death. But, uh, <laughs> Why? Uh, that is a miss. Wait, no, hang on. How much do you add to that? Plus nine? Plus yeah, it's nine. A hit. That's a hit. <laughs> He's a big guy. He doesn't have good armor. I do not get the sneak attack on the second one, though. Mm. Yeah, it's once per round. It's true. It's true. It's actually once per attack. Per turn. It's per once turn. per turn. Well, turn. It's, yeah, turn. basically. Yeah. So I guess you put on uh, a... Oh, I get the crit on the <laughs> <laughs> other. Oh. Oh, no oh. oh, well, so that's crit. 11... Nine. Actually, it's, yeah, it's just nine because of the, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. He is still up, but he looks like shit. All right. Uh, that's Freya. Okay. Uh, it is Pyzane's turn. You're all so uh, idiots. He... Why are you all so dense? <laughs> because she threatened my friend. That's great. You're threatening my, per my people, basically. I'm like, You're an idiot. I'm like, I'm not gonna actually kill the ogre. Oh, really? Kill. I will if he doesn't agree to be my footstool. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Pyzane is going to stand. So dysfunctional. A little bit. Uh, he unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately going unconscious, he did lose his pain for pain stacks. That's unfortunate. Oh. But uh, he also will need to rage again. But I think he's gonna just. Couple steps back. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he's just gonna attack. Twice. And he's going to attack non lethal. And you see, he like swings the hammer up around to the back of the ogre's head and just boom, one head, one hit. Mm -hmm. I think slumps over and he's uh Pizane is going to look back to uh the uh, banu he goes listen i've been through this i didn't have anything to do with the scorch lands that's not me that's evadona now if you could please come over here and patch your friend up it's been enough death already uh and you see abanu just like kind of purses her lips and like Whatever you say, Claim Keeper. Very bitterly. Mm -hmm. uh, as Pyzine looks to Freya, looks over to uh, these two. Guessing that one's one of yours? Yeah. He's, uh, he's got some... Uh, experience that makes it harder to control him. Yeah. Who am I to judge? Well, let's go make sure that Goliath doesn't rip him in half. Uh, and he's going to spend the rest of his movement, which is only like 10 feet, because he had to get up. Mm -hmm. This way. Uh, Ogre is unconscious, and he's make a death save. God. Success! Hey. Viscar! Rawr! Uh, this is it. Or, um, uh, reckless. <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, it's a crit. Oh yeah. shit, that is okay. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> okay. Second. Control oh. him, please. This, you don't kill this one, please. No killing at all would be great. <laughs> and uh, third <laughs> or bonus action it's attack. Our... Late now. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, this guy has been raging, so you feel like he's not as hurt as you'd expect after all of that. The last two were psychic, so all of it goes through. Ah, right. Same with the last couple. Oh, that is good to oh, note. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. That is good to note. Those last two do hurt. <laughs> yeah. I so I guess like the kind of... previous last two was a total of 15, or gotcha. I guess, and a total of nine. Okay. For the he is looking a little hurt. All right. Well... Mm. Ray said, don't kill him! No, but it with gotta mouth. go down. Um, I'm gonna spend 10 points of decay for another action. Oh. <laughs> and attack again. 10 points of decay for another action? Yeah, because I used it once before. Yeah, already burst. Oh, right. Right, yeah, right, right. and then um, another claw. God. Ooh, I crit. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and please, then. No, uh, the last attack with the psychic blades. Full, full damage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is down yet? No. Okay. But getting hurt. Okay, I'm done. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, you feel like this guy is close to like Pisine's level of hardiness as a fairly high level barbarian with rage. <laughs> the psychic has been going through. Everything else has been halved. Right. Uh, Gladiator is going to um, give a quick bow and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I want that to do is... that. Can I do that? <laughs> uh, if, you, if you... It is your turn if you would like to um, uh, to surrender, to, uh, to, to uh, submit, you may do so. However, your team is winning, so it would look very weird. Uh, you could yeah, also just do nothing. Why? <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. The ogre is unconscious and bleeding out as well in the middle. It was technically non-lethal, but uh... oh, that's true. It's non-lethal. He doesn't even need that save. He's just unconscious. My silly, silly me. Okay, he's just unconscious. Yeah, he's just unconscious. I forgot. I it's technically have lethal. Thirty-five movement. All right. Yeah. I got yeah. Movement. So. Movement. He's just sleeping. He's not even hurt. Like bleeding out. Uh, okay, but I could. He's not. You could like, heal him. Zero. Oh, he is. He's at zero, yeah, but he's, he's not making zero. death saves. Uh, Pisine yeah. attacked non lethally, which means he just bonked him on the head to knock him out. I guess 2d6 two two for uh, aura healing. Okay. He, okay. He gets back up. Uh, <laughs> the ogre hasn't done a single Sorry, thing this fight. I just realized. Literally yeah, hasn't that, that, that was lack of wanting to, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what happened? <laughs> he just kind of lumbers up. Did I win? I believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's he's still like like looks haunted as like life force has been sucked out of him, and then he's been like beat over the head. <laughs> Fella, don't mess with them. I mean it. I'll use it. Or you. Oh, oh, it. <laughs> All right, uh, Gregor. With that threat, is there anything else? Um, I'm gonna ready in action if she tries to. Uh, um. Do anything. She said she wanted to go for pie Zane. I don't care. Uh, uh, she didn't no, say. she didn't. She she didn't say that. Oh, I, I thought she said, uh, no. she said, I'll make him my footstool. No. <laughs> oh, no, no. That was me oh, about the pet. ogre. Right. Yeah. Oh, the ogre. Okay. Yeah. Him. Yeah. This, this, Pizing, this she wants as a pet. Yeah. <laughs> Big difference. 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 Something to rest on, someone to control. Yeah. Totally different. Yes. Very different. <sighs> uh, well, that was my action, right? Because that's or healing. Yes. Yes. So bonus action. That was a bonus action. I was say, so it's a healing. bonus action. If you oh, were just doing or if you were doing aura healing and not a spell, that was yeah. a bonus. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. Wow. There's only real one combatant left. If everyone yeah. else is deciding to stand down, it would be yeah. uh, the, the Goliath is the only one left. Where's? Oh. 
Understandably, he is angry. I'm good then. <laughs> okay. I don't need to really do an action. Cause... <laughs> okay. Uh, it is uh, Abanu's oh, turn. Be peaceful. No more attacking. I like peace. Uh, Abanu. <laughs> guys have really made a case for trying to not end this violently. No. <laughs> Except for this card. <laughs> uh, well. It's hard to say. I'm going to have... I'm going to roll a d30. You want high. Well, that's the opposite of high. Okay. Oh, no. Nah. nah. <laughs> All right, great. Do not kill, but we will win. Uh, and he, she shouts that to the Goliath. Mm. Uh, and you, you see that you don't know if the Goliath's going to listen to her, uh, but she does seem to still be willing to fight. She's going to shoot at Viscar. Uh, <sighs> take three shots with sharp shooter. You have advantage. Oh, great. Now there's a flare. You're welcome. So minus five. <laughs> 15. Oh, chits. You hit. You just hit. Yep. <laughs> cool. That is three hits with Sharpshooter Oof. because it's a 15 AC. Oh, boy. That's right. Uh, okay. It's so, fun, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> fun. Very fun. Yeah. I get fun, to experience actually. it now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> From the fun side. It is 52 points of piercing damage total, halved to 26. Was, can I? I'm gonna use a reaction to sure. have a, another one of those. So, okay. Um, so I don't uh, know how to do that. Uh, Just so what is what is the reaction you're doing? What it has just it's, one hit? Uh, I think so. It's mm. the second portion. Ah, your tattoo, mm. right? Yeah. When you take damage, your reaction becomes substantial for a moment. Have the damage you take. Okay, so subtract mm. eight of the damage. From the last hit. 18? Did I do that right? Yeah, 18? Yes. It's 26 total, so 18. Ye no, no. Tw tw uh, 26 was the total of three attacks. Yeah. You took 52 from three attacks. Yeah. 26 was the halved total. You yeah. only you only use this on the last attack. Right. Because it's three different hits. Yeah, So I know. the last so attack I dealt 16, halved to eight, have so then you can have it to four now. So, so four less 22. damage. 22 points of damage. Total, total. Yes. yes. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the one hit. No. Yes, total, yes. Oh, wait, I went the wrong way. Okay. Should be minus the future, I will remember to do those one at a time for you, because you have that. That's good to know. There's just some smoke coming out of my head. It's fine. Who? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 uh, okay. That is Abanu's turn. It is the Goliath's turn. <sighs> Rar. Yeah, Rar. <laughs> uh, he's gonna. You've been recklessing still. Yep. Just, totally. just like he he has 100%. as well. Oh, uh, really? you have, oh. Yes, I've been. Well, oh. well, no, he did it the last he time. Doesn't, because he I doesn't was need reckless. to now because you've been recklessing. You've been giving oh, yeah. him the advantage. Yeah. With oh, well, there you go. Oh. He doesn't need to now. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. It's a yes twenty. Yes, seventeen. Yes, we all should just step up and a sixteen. Hit. I'll hit. We can just watch them. Okay, this is just two barbarians just hacking into each other, basically. I'm okay with that. Uh, so the first hit, I'll do these one at a time in case it matters. It's Twelve slashing, half to six. Okay. Eleven half to five. Okay. And twenty one half to ten. Cool. And I need three right. con saves. Sure. I'm playing. Damn. If you fail one of them you can stop. You're raging, okay. you don't need oh sorry, that's strength. Yes, Never it's mind. Strength. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Twenty three, I, I win. I win. Good, good. I win. Oh my god, twenty three, twenty three, twenty three. Wow. Okay. 
Keep rolling was that 17s. Three 17s? Holy crap. Okay, cool. Well, no one's gonna ever find out what the serrated greatsword does on a fail. Mm. Uh, that's his turn. It is Cafella. <sighs> I don't like this one. He doesn't like my magic. I'm going to use my first homebrew power. Um, mm. I am going to flare for advantage and use my draconic bolt against the Ah, uh, yes. Um, as I roll to hit, spend aura. You're doing this guy, right? Yes. All right. With a 23 to hit. Oh my god. Don't kill him, Ice Queen. Oh my god. Where as, was this from again? Uh, this is my Draconic Bolt. It's, I have five uses of it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, um, that will all go through. As I form, like, a lance of cold that kind of moves like a... It almost looks like a dragon's uh, breath, but it's icy. As I fire it off and... Up. It is not is a, spell. a spell. Not it a is spell. a okay. ability. I need to ask. I need to ask. Okay. So you are within his range now. Yes. It okay. 32 points hit. of cold. Yep. He's looking like shit. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. I just want to say this out loud. Viscar, you and him have been keeping HP pace almost one to one. He's at the <laughs> same as you by like one off. Oh my god. Literally, you two have been this like keeping up. Over. <laughs> All right, Cafella. Is that, is that it? Um, It doesn't look like the stupid guy is going to come hit me now, does it? The ogre? No. Yeah. He He's just kind of sitting on his butt. Okay. Like scratching at the parts where he's been hit. <laughs> like right. he looks a little bit like he's he's done. He's out. He's okay. good. Um So a claim keeper is here in exile. What has caused that? Is this really the time? Well, I think our friend over there can handle him, and Gregor <sighs> seems to have pacified the others. We'll talk after. <sighs> Fine. Do what you will, meatheads. That's my turn. Okay. Freya. <laughs> Freya just Don't like Freya just like pats the other on the side. You asshole big guy. <laughs> so <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Alright. Don't kill him! I'm not going to. Do you have to say that every time? Yes! <laughs> there is one bleeding out in the corner, so it's it does have some weight. Yeah. I, I was me. <laughs> I know, but it's fair. It's fair. Wait, where's the bleeding out one? Why didn't I hear about that? Oh, it, it's it, the one that Viscar murdered early on is super dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, super I'm good. assuming uh, a bump yes, hits. Yes, <laughs> absolutely will hit. Right. You rolled his AC on the higher one. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Alright. Uh... Especially with conditions of anything uh, above uh, this 20. This is all psychic. All of this is psychic? Yep. <laughs> Not looking great! We like psychic damage. We need psychic damage. Even if it was totem, it wouldn't Knock matter. Out. Yeah. Call it a day. Wrap it up. So uh, nine plus eight is seventeen. Just hits. <laughs> oh man, you crit again <laughs> on the man, fake one. Roll twenty <laughs> likes. Yeah. Roll twenty likes you more than your real dice do, but still. Uh, <laughs> Ten. How do you how do you put down this Goliath? Uh, I know. She will I know. like flip the blade in her hands and just bash him on the side of the head and help none lethally. Okay, doesn't exactly work like you'd imagine with a psychic weapon. It still does psychic damage regardless of what end you hit it with. But yeah. we're just gonna say that you psychically like give him a really bad headache to the point that he passes out somehow. Really bad brain freeze. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but he is unconscious without actually being 
in risk of being murdered. And as he falls, you see Abanu puts her hand up and gestures to the ogre who goes, oh, right, and puts his hand up. We yield. We yield. Well fought. And the crowd goes wild as the fight ends. Uh, as you guys have all sort of teamed up, it's, it's recognized you guys are probably not going to start infighting at this point since you haven't the whole fight. Uh, and you see uh, Hunt Captain uh, Horak comes down. Well, that was interesting, to say the least. Uh, you see Srali and a couple of other hunters come over and begin to drag off the uh, the Goliath out of the arena. It's uh, Fre- a casualty of this life. Freya will reach up and like tap this guy in this cheek. Don't do that every time, okay? <laughs> uh, you see Horak actually comes over to Viscar and extends a hand out to you. I see, more than that. I see a hunter in the making. We'll be happy to have you. And he, he seems to be, honestly, more impressed by Viscar than anyone else here. Not surprised. Obviously. <laughs> 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 Viscar will drop his rage. Okay. Uh, Srali <laughs> and a couple others uh, come back and, like, like pat this guy on the cheek and like, <laughs> fuck like, yep yep you lost big guy come on let's get you patched up uh and they will take him out as well uh abanu uh will walk over to gregor uh mm-hmm. and will speak a word over to the ogre who just kind of like stands up and just like lumbers off on his own to go and probably drink and get patched up himself. He goes over and sits with the gladiator over by this fire. He's like, you sucked. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, well, your weapon broke too. You didn't do anything in that fight. Shut up. <laughs> they just start bickering <laughs> over there. Mm-hmm. Um, Abon, I'm going to get some just the, the, mm-hmm. the music going for this place. Uh, Abanu walks up to Gregor and uh, kind of like squats down to be a little bit more on your level. Mm-hmm. So tell me, do you are you old enough to have known anything about Delanon? Only what my family's told me. Which isn't good things that happened to it. Same. I never got to see it myself. I didn't think I'd ever meet a kindred spirit here. She extends a hand out to you. Huntress, Huntress Abanu. Gregor Greenbrook. (laughs) Well fought, all of you. That was um, impressive in various degrees. We haven't seen that much magic in the ring in a long time, that's for sure. Some people here would be wary of that, but some of us appreciate it. Uh, speaking of people who appreciate it, Paisen is currently wrapping his, his bandages and healing mm-hmm. himself up, spending the hit die and such. Yes, uh, speaking of which, you four. Yes. He, uh, he appraises you. Um, I like being praised. I do. <laughs> who is this? He doesn't seem to recognize... You four seem very coordinated. We've not had four exiles like this in a long time, apparently. Do you all know each other? Yep. Of course we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't coordinate like apparently that. Apparently, you were Viscar. Not anymore. I'm. See, Horak looks over to Pizen. Yes, former claim keeper. Paisane here. It's a bit of a celebrity around here these days. He looks to... See, Horak looks to Viscar. I'd keep your distance from that one. He's possessed of something evil. Uh... Paisane... Would the name... Did Paisane go by the name Paisane in the arena? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Uh, when Paisane yeah. was in the yeah. arena, he just had the name Paisane. Just, he he, just did, Paisane. he he gained the name the Crimson Lion in the arena okay. as well, but right. he was originally just Paisane. Okay. Would I know anything about Paisane? That I would know of Paisane. I think I'm yes. just gonna let I'm just gonna let you all know. 
He is one of the four claim keepers, okay. or was. He is a celebrity in Bardoust. Okay, great. You may not have ever met him, but the name Pizane carries weight here. Yeah, Pizane. Pizane of Arena and claim keeper. Miskar want to be like Pizane and Freya. Mostly Freya. You see, so strong. You see, Horak looks over towards the, his other, his fellow Leonin. I too once had such ambitions, but we all grow up, I suppose. And there's something between like Horak and Paizane. You see, like there's a tension, uh, and you see Paizane just like. <clears throat> Anyways, you four Look, points to you four specifically. Yeah. If you have a moment, I'd like to discuss something with you. I have a tent on the edge of town. Does so it have food? I can arrange that. See, Horax stands up, steps forward. No, no, no. I've already claimed this one. Like, crabs onto Viscar. Oh, we need more hunters. You're not taking any more people on this ridiculous trip of yours. Rip. Viscar is with us. You will do no such thing. Unless you want to go against... None of our muscle! We can uh, still hold muscle. claims, can't we? Horak looks to Viscar. If you have any sense, you'll join the hunters. There's no greater life for an exile. We get the first of every kill, the best equipment, the best sleeping quarters. You would be a valued member of our team. This one, looking over to Paizane, would have you attempt the trials like he has the previous suckers who came here. Okay, now that's just offensive. Wait, <laughs> She's like fingers to have her fangs. So this one wishes to leave. Uh -huh. Well then. I like you. I say it's like, thanks. <laughs> I mean, isn't that why we came here? Viscar no exile, no traitor. Viscar go back home. Yeah. You see... Horak's face falls for a moment. What a waste. And just sort of like pushes away Viscar. Like from the front. Like he was like had his hand on your shoulder and just sort of shoves off and walks back. Fine. Go get yourself killed for all I care. And he's just yeah. going to stalk off. Uh, Abanu uh, steps up. The Paizen. If, um... Never mind. And he just she just walks past and he's like Banu, please, I and she just keeps walking. Apparently you've got a history. Not much. She's just looking for an outlet. Mm. Alright. Sorry. Um let's uh talk more in private. Uh, and you guys will follow Paizane uh, out of the arena. Uh, he will, as you guys are walking around, uh, point out points of interest around Exilos and give you guys access to the map. Yeah. Uh, can we close the turn order tracker? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you guys are currently at the ruling ring. Uh, you guys arrived at the docks. Uh, he'll tell you there is a stockpile of general food and clothing. Um, this is maintained by the community, and it is, there's no like rules. You can just take how much you want. However, taking more than you need tends to be uh, looked down upon and will cause friction amongst the community. Mm. However, that doesn't mean some people haven't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there is a tent where uh, sometimes the hunters or other leaders of the community will speak to the populace here. You're in the ruling ring right now where you determine your roles. Um, after that battle, pretty much none of you get poached to any of the tents, uh, other than Viscar got an offer to be a hunter. Um, I think actually the loggers probably come to Gregor as you're leaving <laughs> and are like, of course we, they would. <laughs> we have no idea how the fuck you did that, but if you can do that to trees, you would be invaluable in our community. <laughs> like, the lo the loggers who like who gather the lumber from the jungles, which is in itself a little bit of a dangerous task, uh, 
beg Gregor to join, but Paisan's <laughs> like, I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but I kind of got to them first. If they don't want to be, tempting, but... <laughs> if, if they don't want what I offer, I'll send them your way. And they're like, you better. As, <laughs> it's like, Grani, like, you better, you... Just, just logger goes back and, and decides to try again later. Um... But yeah, you guys proved you guys proved capable enough to probably join any of the tents, uh, as he explains that there are gatherers, uh, there are loggers, there are hunters, there are crafters, which uh, they rest with Alu. Uh, Alu is the head crafter of the village. He's the one who creates all of the weapons and arms and uh, tools for the people, um, as well as manages the mine they have been apparently expanding uh, into the mountain range uh, near Exilos. To gather as much raw material as they can, uh, he will tell you that most of the metal that they do manage to find, first of all, they don't have a working forge, so a lot of it is processed as crudely as possible. Finding, like, a a broadsword here is unlikely. Finding, like, a... Yeah, yeah, yeah actually. Um, but a lot of the, the, the mine, the, the ore they find goes into making, like, uh, braces and nails and things like that. They don't find a lot, um, but they're trying. Uh, he also explains the hunters' tents. Of course, they're the most uh, the most protected, the most um, bountiful. Uh, the hunters have the highest role in the society. Um, and there is uh, two other th things of note. He'll point out. There's a, a watchtower on the cliff face at the south edge of town, known as Marauders' Watch. Uh, usually more of the, uh, the infirm or the sometimes eagle-eyed exile that comes through get assigned there to keep an eye out for, um, incoming and ongoing pirate ships in the area, as there is an actual steady, uh, supply of pirates that come here sometimes, uh, to trade, sometimes to pillage, sometimes Whenever just out of curiosity... <laughs> Um, and he will note uh, the Sea Wolves Market, uh, which is built onto the edge of a uh, devastated broken ship at the edge of the settlement. Um, whenever a pirate captain does decide to dock here, that becomes a bustling hub of activity where anything is traded. Sometimes weaker members of the clan or of, of, the, of the tribe are offered for crates of booze or food or clothing um he'll explain that's where that's where abanu's bow and arrow came from was the sea wolves market you mm -hmm. could actually get real equipment there but you usually have to give something of equal value so take that as you will um but paizane brings you guys up to this tent at the edge of town towards the northern tip of exilos where uh, he himself resides, and I'll put you guys in uh, in his. I was right. Uh, his he room. is a lone lion. <laughs> ah. Well, nobody really wants yeah. to talk to him. <laughs> well, apparently, he's crazy. Uh, as you guys walk into the the uh, leather makeshift tent, you see there are a number of like crafted goods that are half decent. He's living mm. in a way um and he'll uh yeah he'll walk over to one of these barrels uh he said you were looking for food right this car hungry yes uh he'll reach in and grab a couple bundles and come over to the table and lay out uh like a half wheel of cheese uh, a couple loaves of like hardened bread um he'll lay out five mugs of ale from the barrel that he had, seemingly. Oh. Um, he has he has alcohol, everybody. <laughs> not a lot, not a lot, but I oh. fought for what I've got. Okay. <laughs> uh, I need a little glass anyway. Uh, I don't have that many chairs, but feel free to pull up a barrel or box or something. Uh, and he's just gonna offer you guys to have a seat and eat of what he has. I'll have some uh, on the table. He'll he'll reach over to the fire. Um, he's it's out at the moment, but he'll uh, he'll start it up. Uh, and you see, there is like a hole in the center of the top of the tent to, for excess uh, smoke to um, to vent. 
uh, and he'll grab a couple of strips of meat that like, like he's got some like rabbits and various like critters hung up and he'll start to uh, prepare them for a meal basically so you four don't look like normal exiles no. what's your deal ever heard of the Sionic Reavers he takes he pauses for a sec as he's grabbing one of like the rabbits oh shit who hasn't and he'll keep continuing well, Where was left? Left? I thought like Caprillo group? hired like two dozen people for that. <laughs> Caprillo. You mean the one who betrayed us? As he's like, he's putting like these, these like skinned rabbits on like skewers and putting them to the fire. He arches an eyebrow. Okay, that sounds like a story. Yeah. We are simply a way for him to continue doing as he wishes while we become his scapegoats until we get out of here and then he'll be under my heel as he should be you have a real dominatrix thing going on you know that thank you see as you say that as you say that freya paisen goes sounds like she's met zivadana <laughs> well um Sorry to hear about that, I guess. First of all, uh, sounds like you're getting the raw end of a pretty raw deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get me out of here. <laughs> well, to that end, if you all are interested in leaving, mm -hmm. I am, as I'm sure you heard, Orak say, I've been looking for talent to undergo the trials. Would that be of any interest to any of you? I don't need oh, to stay here any longer that? than possible. Okay, that was exactly. a lot at once. Exactly. <laughs> are the trials? Uh, he'll, he'll leave the the meat to start like oh, to start cooking as he he sits in his chair like enough away that he can keep an eye on the fire as he keeps talking. I'll be honest. I um. I don't know. He like kind of scratches his head. This is going to sound a little weird, but bear with me. Go ahead. So, uh, as you all have heard and ascertained, I am was claimkeeper uh, of Susail. I don't want to get into it too much, but um, I turned on Sifatona. Oh. Uh, he'll uh, move the leather aside, and you do see like the four deep scars with the one uh, crossing that he has across the, almost like the the tally mark uh, that's scar that's on his chest. Scar. I um, rejected her claim against me as claim keeper, and I came home to face my punishment after running from it for long enough. I have... Unanimous of you. Uh, I, I have business with her, and she wouldn't talk to me unless I came back. Uh. I've been in exile here for a couple of weeks now. Mm. Before that, she had me in the arena for some ridiculous reason. <clears throat> She won't listen to anything I say until I've completed the trials. It's one of her conditions. I have already... Right? Sorry. <laughs> yes, I suppose. I have, um... I have attempted the first trial already. Unfortunately, and I know how this is going to sound, I don't remember any of it. You can ask around. Yeah, you. He just kind of like slaps his head. Ah. You remember uh, now? No. <laughs> but oh. thanks. You can ask around town if you don't believe me, but I took five warriors with me two weeks ago. Only I returned, and I don't even remember what happened to them. I know how this sounds, and I know that it's not exactly confidence-boosting, but I don't want to lie to you. 
We well, have I'm lying lately. I'm so. sure I'm sure we have all heard the rumors. The triers trials are unwinnable. They're slaughterhouses. Whatever. I do not believe this. If Zivadona wanted me dead, she had ample opportunity to do so. She sent me here for a reason. There have to be ways to pass the trials. I just... If you're willing, I would like you all to accompany me on my second attempt. I wish that I had more to offer for information, but I do not. I don't understand why you would do away with the light of Zivadona. However, it just means for your first trial you took inadequate people with you. I am sure that we will be more than enough to get us through the trials so that we can be returned to the light of Zivadona and serve by her side. That actually yeah, does. Uh, <laughs> I just say it again. Well, that brings up another question. Uh, as he like turns and like grabs some of the the cooked meat, uh, and begins to like set it out. Basically, doesn't have silverware, so <laughs> sets it on plates. Mm -hmm. What are your um? What are your goals exactly? As he grabs one, and just bites into it. So let's let's just say hypothetically. We pass the trials and you get back in the good grace of Zivatona. What then? All I wish is to serve under her directly. It is the weak of this land who don't understand magic, and those who are strong who cultivate it. Zivadona herself uses magic, does she not? She does quite powerfully. So many brutes of this land just don't understand how useful it is. The truly strong understand this. That's a dangerous opinion to have in this land, but you're not wrong. Okay. Service under Zivadona. Got it. Looks to the rest of you. What about you? Please, I just don't want Viscar to have to be stuck in a place like this. And she like flicks her wrist and has one of her psionic knives appear and stabs one of the pieces of meat and starts to eat it. Hmm. Don't know if that works, but I'll allow it. <laughs> Again, they are psychic blades. <laughs> but sure, we'll say that works. Viscar, stick with Preya. Peace card is best friend. Alright. Uh, you're such a softy. So, for you two, it's just a matter of getting out. Okay? No, this car, no, traitor. This car, shame to family. Yeah, admittedly, it's kind of, you know, sours my teeth. Pizen, you know? in the middle of you talking, Pizen goes, what the fuck? I Sorry. just want to get out of here. Uh... After you talk again, Pisan kind of yeah, slick squares in on you. Oh, okay. Got it. Sure. All right. So three want to get out. One wants to serve. Okay. That well, works for me. Um, oh, I know. And to bring justice to that claim keeper who made us his scapegoats. I think that is something okay. we all want. Yeah. <laughs> Be score shred. Caprilla definitely deserves what's coming to him. I just nod in agreement. Hmm. Maybe Ice Queen become Caprilla. Take job. That would be ideal. You're welcome for good ideas. Don't say <laughs> this card don't have good ideas. There would need to be a new claim keeper. But I would be willing to take that role. You don't have it for all I care. Yeah. Hmm. Well, 
I can't help you with revenge on a claimer. Unfortunately, once we're out of here, I have business with Zivadona. But... I was like, no. what? This car kind of curious. I can't really go into all of it, but... In the... Hope of... Full disclosure... I have a... Sort of proposal for Zivadona. Let's put it that way. And she won't to see. ask to marry Ziva No, no, a uh, bad word. <laughs> wrong one. No, I have a request of her, not oh. for that. Just, just a request. Okay. And uh. she won't hear me out until I've apparently solved certain conditions. One of which was re-becoming champion of the arena, which took two months. <laughs> All right, you were a champion. Yes, a long time ago, and then again oh. now. Second of her conditions was that I undergo exile, and pass the trials. She said the trials would make it clear. I didn't know what that meant. She said the third condition would reveal itself at the third trial. Unfortunately, very mystic and cryptic. Uh, she's the one who designed them, so I guess she didn't want to give any hints. That makes sense. I don't know. What if you're supposed to close eyes and do trial? I'll keep. He, he puts a hand on your shoulder. I'll keep that in mind. That's honestly, who like knows? To see, but yeah. He's got a brain of operation. She only left me with one thing. Some, again, cryptic bullshit. Mm. Only through dispelling remorse, accepting rebirth, can one return to the light. Right. <sighs> she likes to be all dramatic when she talks. I know Sorry, say it again. Dispelling like remorse. What else? Uh, by dispelling remorse, accepting rebirth, one can return to the light. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I just said I know a couple people like that. And I just, <laughs> I just, I just look at uh, Cafella. Cafella, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, but sorry. <laughs> Nothing. Um. But yeah, um, like I said, I've already tried once and it didn't go well. And I thought I was all prepared as I could be. He's like, you see, gestures like the the giant club, like the act as like a makeshift mall. It's just like you're not sure what creatures live in the jungle, but it's a thigh bone the size of his body that's like <laughs> wrapped in leather for a handle. Cool. It took me about a week to hunt this down. Back when I was a hunter. And then, um, well, after the. After the failed trial attempt, and I managed to come back, everyone got a little spooked of me. Hmm. Apparently, that's never happened before. Anyone who goes never returns. And they asked what happened to the others, and I wish I knew. So, you're not gonna make any friends while you're with me. Except for Alu. Alu seems to like me. I don't know why. Alu. He's the head crafter here. He's a nice guy. Uh, not really meant to be here, but uh, it's nice to have somebody sociable, I guess. Well. <sighs> so were you like where was this trial, the first trial located? The first of the three temples, the Temple of Remorse. It's not too far from town. Oh. On foot, we can get there in about a day. Mm -hmm. All right. Before that, I was well, before that, if you all are not in a massive hurry, there is something we could do to make our odds better. It's I was planning on doing it myself, but if I have you four, I think it's even better. Mm -hmm. 
I mentioned before about the Sea Wolves market. Every once in a while, a pirate comes through. <laughs> the The first time I was here, they arrived. It's been about three weeks since then. They're due back this week. <laughs> a boat known as the Harbinger comes. With it, it brings a number of treasures. Apparently, as far as I understand it, the Harbinger makes its way up to the to the port Orlin, at the capital, stocks up on treasures there, and brings them back to the Karanis Isles for some reason, stopping here along the way. We don't really have anything to trade. So I say... They're fucking pirates anyways. Yes. If you're up for it... Yes. Yes. Let's take it all. Yes. Card, yes. I Red like the way you yes. think. I mean, we have to survive here, right? Just I mean, your best. they'll have weapons, armor, food, supplies, and probably Ow. a few magical items. Oh, There's no better way to be prepared for the trials. Yeah, yeah. However, once we do this, there's really no going back. The people here will not be okay with that. We'll be cutting off one of the most major supply routes the, the exiles have. Mm. Which I don't feel great about, but I can't stress the importance of me getting back to Zivadona. I need to speak with her. Mm. And we just slip in, steal some stuff, and get out then? Is that a well, way? there is a catch. Obviously, the boat remains guarded pretty heavily. But uh -huh. I've noticed from rumors around town and the last time I saw him, the captain of this boat has some weird ritual. Every time the boat docks, he jumps straight into the water and seems to be down there for a few minutes. I don't know why. Might be the best chance we have to take what we can before he comes back. It's not a long window, but it's something. <laughs> we have to hit we hit the boat as soon as it arrives. If needed, I could pull some distraction as I don't need to breathe. Viscar can swim very good sometimes. I <laughs> he looks to you guys. The captain of the boat is a shark kin. If you would like to fight him in the water, kind of. I don't recommend it. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. You all would know shark kin are extremely rare breeds in Bardest, in the world in general. Um, usually, usually located around the Karanis Isles or uh, other ports and such. They they have almost a need to be near water mm. to an extent. Um, but they are what they sound like. Bipedal sharks. Awesome. Right? <laughs> so. But I, I leave it to you based on your abilities. I'd like most of you to survive, though, for the trials. This, again, this is just a supply run. If we need to retreat, do so. I need you all alive for the trials more than I need you alive to get some weapons. True. So steal everything. If we can, yes. Okay. I think that would be best. Okay. Does anybody have a bag of holding? <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> them, but not me, no. Hopefully there's one in there. Well, need me. I am actually really good at carrying stuff. Uh, just for information, as Barry told him, she can carry double her normal oh, carrying you're capacity. <laughs> your bear nice. totem? You suck. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Of course, he wanted the resistances. Yeah, to everything, yeah. Okay. Um, right. Uh, so this this can count as a short rest for you guys, but also uh, if you guys are agreeing to this plan with Paizane, uh, it will be uh, a few days. You have to wait for the, the ship to arrive. It will be at least a few days before the ship arrives. Um, mm -hmm. At this point, I would like us to take maybe like a 15, 20 minute break so I can grab something to eat real quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, if if you guys want longer, we can go to eight, but I'm good for seven forty-five. Um, 
whatever you guys think you need. I don't know if anyone else needs to like make food and eat yeah, it. Like or... fifty, just like five extra minutes. Seven, seven fifty. Yeah. So twenty minute break. Yeah. Does that work for sure. you, Megan? I think so. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we will uh, reconvene oh, yeah, totally. in about twenty minutes. Okay. okay. All right, now we're back. Okay. Uh, so let me grab your aura familiar. <clears throat> I'll put that over here. Is it a cat? Mm, not quite. Oh. oh. Something oh. sort of. Okay. <laughs> Great, I love that. As this forms out of blue aura. Assuming we might have, <sighs> have, we ever, have we ever seen this before? Thank you. Um, maybe. It's possible. If you've worked with Cafella, like, it depends on how many missions you've been on with Cafella specifically. Um, Weird. Yeah. My aura familiar. Yes. Uh, uh, Freya, as you, you have decided <clears throat> to offer to Paizane um, aura healing uh, or a purification. Um, he will put a hand up. Uh, it is, uh, unnecessary. Um, unfortunately, I am, uh, barren. What? Oh. So, uh. Oh, is that I... why I saw what I saw? Can I do it? What do you mean? Uh, well, uh, what? Gregor can do a history check, yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sure. When you were, you know. On the ground, I went to Ur heal you, and I guess my psionic abilities kicked in, and I saw some sort of void. Ah, <clears throat> sorry about that, uh, Gregor. Uh, twenty-three history. What are you trying to check? Um, if he actually used to have an aura. Oh yes, um. With a 23 history especially, he gained the name the Crimson Lion because he wielded a blood-red aura of greater magnitude than any other warrior of the arena. He had a true red aura. No one knew what that was at the time, really. Um, but yeah, oh, he's very well known for his aura. Um, so <clears throat> something happened there. How did that happen? You were, like, really famous in the arena <sighs> For that. <laughs> See, like rubs his brow. Like, ah, sometimes I forget reputation. Um, sorry, not trying to hide anything. I just figured it'd be easier to not explain. Um, so part of this whole Zivadona getting to um, listen to me. Condition on that was I do the trials, Baron. How did she? There's a technology, um, an item that has been developed by members of Susail. It's called an aura cage. It allows one to take auras. That sounds terrifying. It's a bit. Also sounds like a very odd condition. She has her reasons, I'm sure. It's because he's so powerful. <laughs> Duh. I mean, if he's, you know, he's lived this long without it, there's gonna be something. It also, um, it helps my, um, see, he looks a little uncomfortable, especially looking at Freya, who's uh, already kind of called him out on something. Um, <clears throat> being Baron allows me to tap into something, uh, that I've been working on last two months uh, I don't know how to really explain it but there is a, uh, a a realm or dimension so I don't know what the fuck to call it there's a place known as the void and I've been there and I came back and I am not going to explain how, because that would take way too long. I thought that was the end of it. I had a bad experience, whatever. No big deal. When I told the Claim Chieftain about this experience, it was like she had 
<clears throat> struck gold. She said that I had to cultivate this ability. There was something I was neglecting. Mm. That's why she made me go to the arena and become champion again. To build up the sensation. She calls me a void walker now. That's actually kind of cool. Sure. Mm. Cool. <clears throat> I'd rather have my aura if I was him. <laughs> well, I mean, yes. Yes, I agree. I would not want to be without my aura. I can't imagine. It's all right, so I guess. You're basically doing these trials to get your aura back and talk to Maybe. Her. She didn't really... She didn't really... He's like, he's really... As he's saying it now, he's realizing she didn't really promise the aura back. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> he's like, shit! <laughs> you forgot something! <laughs> well, I have aura. <laughs> I guess it'll just... We'll just have to make sure he's survived to find out. Yes. Well, you're all free to uh, stay near me, or you can um, you can inquire with the others about a tent. But if you're, but if you're not looking to stay long term, and you're willing to do the trials, you'll only be in Exilos for a few more days. Sounds good to me. Yeah. I guess the only thing I care about doing is going to that supply tent and doing all these rags. Mm. You may do so. Yeah. Yes, that does Not a sound good look for me. favorable. I mean, this guy likes them. They're comfy and breathable. You know, get well, a full range of motion. <laughs> comfy is to wear. <laughs> Not for nothing in this car, but um, I doubt these rags would take too many hits before just falling off. <laughs> oh my. I mean, okay, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> Miskar has no mm. qualms about that. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, so what's the plan when we do this? Are we going stealthy or are we going... <laughs> no, uh... I don't I really mean, do stealth that well. Thing. You can what now? I mean, if I can get in there initially, is anyone allowed in there? On the ship, no. Uh, that's wow. sort of the problem. Is we that's what the Sea Wolf Market is for. It's a between point for the exiles and the pirates to meet. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to board the ship. If you would like to try stealth, that's fine. I'm not um, not really the stealthy type. It'd be preferable to not make, you know, enemies of everyone here, though. For survival's sake. Well. The plan is to leave Exilos as soon as we've gotten our supplies. And we won't really be back. But it's up to you. If you want to try stealth, I'm not against it. Can Ice Queen make Paizen go away? <sighs> I... I... What? I'm sorry, what? Like go. Yes, I can Not make Pizane invisible. Oh, invisible, you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can do that. Scar. I can do invisible, at least. <laughs> I can Discar walk up the side of the boat. Discar can, too. That's interesting. Discar Alternatively. Could also swim underwater, but. Sorry. How Ice large cream. is the ship? I I don't know how to really uh, he'll try to explain it in the best way he can uh, it's not massive but from tip to tip it's about 250 feet okay. long I could get most of it um Hmm. Don't know what that means. 
What do you have in mind? Hallucinatory terrain. 300 oh. foot range. 50 foot cube in range. You Okay. You make natural terrain in a 100 foot cube in range look, sound, and smell oh, like other sorts right. of natural you're terrain. Right. That's you not can't natural. make a building. You can't make a boat. Never mind. It's natural. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> JK, wow. <well. laughs> JK. Um. Hmm. I mean, I can try the teleport thing, but I'd have to see where I'm going. Actually, no. How, actually, you can. So, I'm sorry. How far can you teleport people? About a mile. See, his eyebrows do like shoot up. So, you're saying if we could see the boat from a mile away, you could teleport us to it? I think that's how I'm reading it, right? A hundred percent. That's exact. That's exactly how it works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we could get on the boat and off before Exilos even knows we were on it. Probably. Stealth. <laughs> Maybe. Kind of. We might be huh. out making all these things, you know, jingle jangle. But although, we'll then we would have to deal with this captain you're so wary of. Yes, that is uh, a trade-off. I'll leave it to you guys. I don't want to be the one to decide all of this. Since... What, do guys, what do you guys think? Mm. Teleporty, any outy? I suppose if we teleport in, there is a chance we might be able to do it without him noticing. You can't teleport into the boat. It has to be a point oh, you yeah, can yeah. see, so it would be on the deck. So the idea would be you'd get to a point of elevation, like uh, Marauder's Watch, mm -hmm. and teleport to the deck of the boat. Does he have a specific spot he typically goes to dive, or is it just random? It's just off the edge of the boat once he gets to port, apparently. Hmm. I mean, it's it's really weird. He The moment he comes out of the boat, the first thing he does is dive in the water. I don't know why. Like he, I don't know if there's anything special in this water. I don't know if there's something down there. As a caster... <laughs> <laughs> Can I make some kind of check to get some kind of hint as to what spell check. he might be casting? 20 Arcana? So you're you're inquiring about the captain's Yes, to me, to me it sounds like he's going down there and doing some kind of spell for the protection of the boat. That's what I'm thinking. With a 20 Arcana, that is possible... You would believe... I think I'll, I'll leave it at this. I think Kefella does think there's some arcane reason he is doing that. Okay. You would have to see what he's doing to have a higher, like, a, a more... Yeah. ...deeper understanding of what it could be. But yes, I think I think Kefella, based on the way Pyzane's explaining it, it sounds more like there might be some arcane reason. They always dock in the same place, correct? Yes. Very well. I shall go take a look. It's where they dock. See if perhaps there's something down there. Okay. We do have a couple days of preparation, so I suppose there's no harm in it. Uh, just for reference, it'll be three days before the uh, boat arrives. Okay. So I'll put us back on the Exilos map uh, for the moment. Uh, what are the rest of you doing while, as Kefella goes to check this spot? Uh, Pyzane will uh, help point out the spot to. I'll just uh, like put myself here. Far for away are we from the hit? Not terribly far. Pyzane's tent is uh, is right near the uh, the Sea Wolves Market mm, yeah. on the edge of town. Uh, Pyzane would say to Gregor, if you wanted to teleport us to the boat, the best chance is if we all go to Marauder's Watch at the mm. southern tip. Uh, and we would then have height elevation, so you could see the deck of the boat from as far away as possible, if that's the plan. Yeah. But, uh, Viscar and Freya, are you two doing anything? I guess Freya would go to the stock just to get some clothes. You, yep, that makes sense. I would like to stop there as well to get... Sure. Clothes. Yeah. Mm. You guys, you guys no. would find just, like, uh, hand-woven... Hand 
tunics. They're they're not very they're a little threadbare. They're not super high quality, but they're better than rags. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find cloth basically. Do they have gloves? Yes, there are gloves. Great, I take a pair of gloves. Gloves. Sure. Um, before Freya would leave, um, this guard would ask her if she could heal some aura decay. Oh yeah, yeah. During okay. the talk, she would have yeah. been more okay. uh, healing. Okay, thank you. And Viscar would have done the same for all the aura that mm-hmm. she spent. You guys should be good to get aura back. Yeah. Um, and then I guess um, one thing that Viscar would want to do is go check out a Lou's tent. Okay. Uh, Pison can help direct all you guys with that. Uh, Gregor, were you going to go do anything? And Pison pointed out the watch, but I don't know if you yeah, were. He pointed it out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm... the day of, obviously, I'll. The day of. Okay. Well, um, we'd all, yeah, yeah. We'd all have to kind of go there to teleport yeah. to the boat, anyways, but yeah. Um, Gregor would ask Pison. He'd be like, uh, so that uh, Albanu uh, lady. Yes. You know where she lives? Uh, she's in the hunter's tents. She's one of the hunters of this this tribe. She doesn't like me much, though, so I keep my distance. She seems to believe that um, anyone who's had direct association with Sivadona is as much responsible for the destruction of her ancestral home. So... She's apparently from um, whatever the Scorchlands used to be, which I don't really know anything about. <laughs> that was way Dillana. before my time. What? Excuse you? What? It's, it's Dillana. Oh, fuck. Are you from there, too? <gasps> uh, sorry, really. I. Oh, God. I don't really I, think like she does. Thank God, because. Can't get through to her. Oh. Mm. She's a good sort. She's just got a big chip on her shoulder, I guess. Trust me, I know. <laughs> um, big Gregor. To fill. <laughs> Gregor, as it's just you and Paizane left, mm. he stops before leaving his tent mm. about what you said. Just know you're not alone. He kind of like he, he has to kneel down, but he puts a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> and then uh, he'll uh, he'll go about his business too. He'll help uh, Cafella point out the spot. Uh, so we'll go to we'll do Cafella first. Okay. Um, as you guys go your ways. Maybe one thing before we all split up. Sure, quick, sure, sure. I'd like to spend a uh, psionic <clears throat> energy dice to give us the psychic whispers again. How far does that reach? Uh, it's a mile. <laughs> yeah, nice. oh, that's amazing. Hour. It lasts for three hours. There's no way it's up. Well, we can well, recast. I mean, yeah, you guys have been resting. Short rest. Yeah. And... True. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys had to walk back to the tent. You've been talking and resting. It's been a couple hours. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's it's like midday by now. Um, so two additional hours. Okay. We're starting now. So, uh, Paisane and Cafella, you guys go to the Seawolves Market, which is this. A uh, set of like scaffolding that is very rickety, but seems to hold up under your weight uh, just fine as it's attached to the side of this large uh, sunken ship, the name of which has been just washed off by the sea. It's it, it's just bleached and like sun bleached and warped wood. Uh, but it seems like part of this market like kind of extends into the interior of the ship. There are a lot of like like you see stalls and like platforms like almost like a stage would be Mm. you also see what look like stockades Mm. like places that they might put potential merchandise for the pirates to view um there's a lot of stuff set up as if they're prepared for the pirates arrival nobody is here though uh as paisin kind of like walks around looking at all it's a little barbaric but we are in bardest so you know what it is. So they have things sitting out for them. No, to... no, they they have like the the tables ready okay. for stuff. Okay. Stuff Think will different. be brought later. Okay. 
but they, they've basically got it all set up for the day that's coming up soon. Okay. Um, and uh, Paizen will direct you down the dock here, uh, and the boat usually appears around this spot, and he'll kind of like gesture in like general area of the water. I've only seen this once myself, but as I understand, he walks out of the cabin. The moment he sees Exilos, he jumps and dives around there. And he's right. down there for a few minutes. I'm gonna put my hand on Paizane, uh, send my familiar down, and close my eyes. Kidok. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Let me take a look. Um. So, uh, did the aura familiars have to breathe like a normal? No. Great. No. I'll send the aura familiar down, of aura. so it okay. can go, and I can look through its eyes. Yeah, see if that's the, one of the benefits of aura familiars. Down there. Uh, your aura is. What is your familiar senses? Uh, so I, I guess. Or I, I guess your senses through the, the the familiar could work as well. So you have dark yeah. vision. Uh, yes, I have dark vision. Okay. Uh, the water is not terribly deep here, as you are. Even if even with the docks, it's it's shallow fairly. Um. Looking down around there, there seems to be a large clearing of like where there's like no kelp or anything, and you can do an investigation check if you'd okay. like. Um, can I flare? <laughs> yeah. Great. So we have time. So you do uh, time and white auras. Yep. Oh, actually, investigation is what I'm actually. I'm only. I'm only uh, proficient in four things, and one of them is investigation. <laughs> Great. 17. Um, what you find is there's like a, a roughly six foot circle of mm -hmm. trodden, like, like, like heavily trodden ground. Like something has landed here and walked around it over and over again. Okay. You don't detect anything magical there's no like sigils there's no like magic stones um but what you determine is that this does seem to be the spot that he consistently lands and seems to stick around for a few minutes and then like Paisen said he always comes back up after a few minutes okay but nothing else beyond that um I can cast spells through my familiar, correct? Yes. Um, Aurora familiar has many, many uses. But so do normal familiars. Yeah. Um, huh. Wow. I really didn't take... <laughs> Are you a bit too combative focused on the spells, or...? Well, for the most... Yeah, I didn't take uh, Detect Magic. Huh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, you well, so this is a tricky situation. <laughs> you are a wizard, yeah. which means you can prepare new spells if you know them. What? However, but... your situation is a little unique, being that you don't have your spell book and you are relying entirely on your memory with keen mind to I remember your spells. Suppose that uh, do we want to make it a roll to know if I have that in my book and I could remember? <sighs> Probably, a I would spell out. <laughs> I would say Arcana check. Okay, just straight no. Help. Just straight no aura. Yeah, I'll say that you have Detect Magic as one you could switch out after a long rest. Okay. Um, so, uh, is it only after a long rest, or I thought you could take an, an hour? Uh, is there an Arcane Recovery for Wizards, uh, I think? I do have Arcane Recovery, which no, you is different. At, at the, at the long, rest. long rest. Yes, yeah. pretty sure. Because arcane recovery is like to get spells back. Get spells slots. The slots yeah. back. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Uh, you you need a long rest to redo your spells, unfortunately. Okay. But um, again, you have a few days. Yeah. Um, I can come back tomorrow and take a mm -hmm. closer look. Um, okay. But I have. I don't have too much else that would be. Useful in this situation. Um, 
Same. Uh... Just looking over my spells, sorry. Sure. We'll jump over. Um, sounds good. Freya at the stock. Uh, you arrive there to find uh, none of the none of the people you really recognize from the ring. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of, of um, a couple of people like a tabaxi, a lizard folk, uh, and like a dwarf that seem to be also going through the stock trying to to, to find something of their own. You see one of them uh, seems to grab a couple of like they look like clay jars or bowls uh, like sort of like handmade silverware basically mm -hmm. um, that they seem to be taking. Uh, you see a, a minotaur and uh, um, a tabaxi arguing over uh, like a set of like spoons and knives um, <laughs> that were apparently crafted by somebody probably like a Lou. Um, they're having their own little argument as to who gets what. It all seems very open. There's not like really like a hierarchy or a policing system here. You can just kind of take whatever you feel you need. I do. Uh, is there very anything? Picky. Okay. Um, you, you can just find like a pair of of, of slacks and then a shirt. Uh, just enough to protect you from the elements, but uh, nothing nothing armor based here. No. Um, she would also try to see if there is a large ish bag she could take. Yes, actually, um, there are. There's like a section that seems like it's maybe meant for the gatherers, which has like a couple of like um, of tools. Uh, a, a couple of, of sacks. There's a couple of like baskets that can be like strapped to the back. It looks like, and there uh, there is also just like a nice big burlap sack. <laughs> so take it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> so look around. Um. Uh... So curiosity, does she like recognize like maybe anyone who, who may have been like part of Caprillo's <laughs> men here? Uh, give me a perception check. You gotta click your boat. Maybe. No. <laughs> yeah, that's no. A, that's a ten. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Perhaps a little paranoid, Freya looks around for anyone of, of, of potential enemy or otherwise. No, it's a big continent. It's it's unlikely that you'd have found somebody you knew in exile here um, to begin with. You don't feel like there's anybody from Caprillo's, you know, uh, employ here. Um, well, with that, so I'll just sling the bag over her shoulder and start heading back up to, I guess, towards docks. Okay. Uh, all right. So you head out. Uh, we'll go over to Viscar. Uh, so Viscar Pizine has helped kind of maneuver you towards uh, Alu's tent before he goes off with Cafella. Uh, you find in the near to the center of, of the encampment a little bit to the north towards the edge of the the stone where the mine begins there is a a, a pair of large tents um where you do see like a couple thin trails of smoke and you hear the sound of like it's not steel on steel it's not like an anvil but you hear the sound of like stone on stone lots of like rhythmic smacking uh as you approach and then you hear this sudden whoosh and feel like a, a slight heat as like almost like a large flame is released uh and you see from the right tent um there's like a large vent in the top of the tent itself for like a lot of smoke to to vent out uh and you see inside there is what looks like a um a burly large red dragonborn with uh, an actual like hammer like an actual like crafted decent quality hammer that you probably imagine came from the the sea wolves market uh and he's currently breaking off pieces of stone to create like a serrated edge of a blade um and he seems to also be uh heating some form of uh you see like a a, a glowing lump of probably metal looks like a raw ore that's from 
the mines. And he, every once in a while, as he, every few hammer strikes, it starts to kind of dim. He looks over and blows a fire breath right on it to keep it heated a bit more. And then he'll like reach over with his bare hands, grab the, the hot metal, break off a piece, put it on like the stone sword and like start hammering. It looks like you, you, you get the sense he's trying to like almost forge a, a metal sword around like a stone core. Like he's trying to like make do with what little they have to give the sword some more stability. And you're not sure if it's going to work. He doesn't look like a blacksmith. You get the feeling he's probably just trying at this point. Uh, but as you walk by, he just kind of like stops breathing fire at one point, looks up at you, just kind of gives like a little nod and like arch arcs his head to the other tent and just kind of keeps back going back to hammering. Um... On the way there, I would have psychically messaged Freya sure. through the link. And be like, Freya, could you get this car so close, please? <laughs> you made good point. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> so walk back into his head. <laughs> <laughs> like shit. <laughs> and then in Draconic to the Red Dragonborn, um, this car will say. Looks pretty good. Um, you keep working. Uh, do you, you say this out loud? In Draconic, yes. Out in loud. Draconic? Yeah. He just, like, looks to you. He looks you in the eye and just, like, like with, without breaking eye contact, just nods. Okay. I'll go now. Or Viscar go now. <laughs> go in the other tent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you go into the other tent and you see... Uh, it looks like there's a lot of tables with all sorts of, like, half-made, like, uh, uh, tools, weapons. There's a couple of, like, spears that are just, like, stone on, on wood, like, wrapped. So many raw materials. There's a pile of, like, rocks and then a pile, a smaller pile of rocks next to it that look like they've been sharpened. Like, he's taken, like, stones and broken them down into points. Um, there's just materials everywhere. And you see, sitting cross-legged on the floor with like a tiny hammer, another decent, like actually made hammer and a stone chipping off little pieces to make a point. You see a, uh, like a, a greenish red uh, scaled uh, lizard folk, uh, like very thin, very lithe, a long narrow tail winding around his body, kind of wrapping around the front. Um, and you see tiny cracked spectacles on his nose which you also imagine probably came from the market. Uh, and he seems very protective of them. Like as, as you come in, he kind of like pushes them up a little bit and kind of keeps a hand there. He's like, uh, can I help? Can I help you? Um, hello, Viscar Alu? He just gives a nod. Okay, cool. Um, I have a question. Um, do mm -hmm. you have um, like lock picks? Uh, I don't, but I, um, I haven't made him, I haven't made a lock yet either. You see, he looks confused, like, what, what would you be picking? Locks. I haven't made any yet. I don't, I don't want to pick your locks. There aren't any other locks. We're in Exilos. This card don't know. This card just need to have lock pick whenever oh. possible. Okay, and he just like sighs and puts his his tools aside. He's like, um, um, this car will trade. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's true. We need um, commerce. I can accept um, food um, if you have raw materials. Um, will these work? And he points to the shackles, shackles. on my. Oh, oh wait. Um, is that metal? I mean, it looks like metal. Tastes like metal. Uh, he immediately like metal. on like on all fours. Like he's just crawling. Like <laughs> stands up in front. Stands up in your face now. Not in your face. He reaches to like your belly button, basically, and he's like grabs at them. Oh, oh wow. This is this is forged. You have forged metal. Where did you get forged metal? They don't ever leave us with forged metal. Oh, this is huge. Um, is this what you need picked? I can pick it. I can do that. But you have to give these to me after they're picked. Well, and then I'll give you the picks. Would they 
give two picks. That's yeah, they can give you two picks. That's fine. Sturdy. They have to be sturdy. I don't want to break on first try. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh. Okay. Um. Go talk to Bonba. Get him to uh get me um this much. He just like cups his hand. This much raw metal. Um, so this much. No, no, no. He like grabs your hands and like pushes them together. <laughs> no, no. Th th this this much. Bonba okay. doesn't understand measurements. You have to use simple things. So just hold your hands like that. Okay. Say that much, and and get me that much raw iron from the mines, and and um I can make good picks if you give me. And like he's like he keeps pointing to the metal. If if you give me those, okay. I can make good picks. If you give me these, okay. 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 Remember, strong pick. Yes, strong, good, like strong Scott. picks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. I walk out. <laughs> I walk out, okay. go to Bamba. <laughs> yep. You walk back with your hands still cuffed in the like same size. Yeah. Uh, and you measure a door or something? Yeah, basi it. basically. Okay. Uh, and you walk back to the other tent where the the uh, the other, the dragonborn, who is apparently named Bamba, uh, is, uh, is still hammering away at something. And he's still got like a like a slab of like molten metal that his like he just keeps picking up with his raw like his bare hands. And just... oh, cool. Uh, Intraconic. Uh, this car have requests for Bomba from Alu. Alu need this much raw material iron from mine. This much. He like he looks up at you, puts the hammer down, grabs your hands. <laughs> Looks them over like, like he's measuring the amount. He just looks at you, and goes, reaches over, <laughs> opens your hand, <laughs> hot iron right in your palm. Oh, oh uh, you take. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. And I go unconscious. <laughs> uh, you take uh, eight points of fire damage, and then he looks at you as you wince, and he he like cocks his head for a moment. And grabs like a jug, <laughs> and pieces your hands in in cold water, <laughs> and then he looks at you and goes, <laughs> and then goes back to hammering. <laughs> he thought you had. <laughs> yeah, he, you're a fellow dragon, but he thought you could do what he do. Apparently, that's freaking funny. I love. You it. see, his hands are like heavily scarred and calloused as if he's gained fire resistance for this specific thing through trial and error. In his head. Fire calluses. In Draconic. This car not fire resistant. You say this, you say this in his head? Yep. You hear back your own voice. You can talk. Duh. Is this talking? Oh, Duh. He's wow. mute. What does my voice sound like? <laughs> like this car? It's ah. not good. <laughs> Sorry about the metal. Um, here. And like, he like, he's looking like with wide eyes like he's never done this before. <laughs> um, he reaches down um, and uh, He's going to grab. Let's see, what would he give you as an apology? Uh, he grabs like under his like under his his desk or his his table there. It's like a bundle of like leaves that he unwrapped, and there's like what looks like a um like a roast, like a big haunch of meat on a, a bone, and he just like hands it to you. You hear in your head, it's good. Big creature in the in jungle. Very good. Ooh. It's pretty good. It, it, <laughs> as far as like what you've eaten, it's probably it's probably you've probably eaten better, but for here it's pretty good quality. This car appreciate, thank you. Uh I forgot your name. Uh Bumble. Um, a Bumble. <laughs> Wait, what what is your name? Bon uh as as you ask him what's his name, a tear forms in his eye. So he goes, My name is Barnabas. In your head. <laughs> I've never been able to tell anyone before. In your own voice. Hello, Viscar. 
<laughs> he's like literally weeping now as he's gotten to tell someone his name. <laughs> oh, okay. Spot. Eh. Barnabas. Okay. Barnabas. <laughs> Barnabas. Uh, think for me, Tin, or I. Do you want to talk later or something? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> In your own voice again. Okay. We're staying with Paisen. If you want to come by and visit. Oh. He's, there's like a moment of pause, and he goes, It will be worth it. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hog back. <laughs> Eating the meat. Yeah, see, Alu's like, Oh. Uh, okay. Um, I didn't need the meat, but I'll take the, the metal. Um, no, meat for Viscar. Barnabas okay. give you ore. Who's Barnabas? He grabs the ore. <laughs> goes over. You told me talk to. Yeah. I said Banba, I don't know what No, he named Barnabas. He told me. He told me? What do you mean he told you? He can't talk or read or write. Yeah, he can talk. He talked like this, and I said that in his head. <laughs> Did you say that out loud? <laughs> no. Okay. You don't have to talk out loud to talk. Like, you don't? No. no. Can no. everyone hear my thoughts all the time? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you see, like a haunted look comes over him. You don't even need to roll deception. He's just like... Hey, ghost. How's it oh. going? Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that for a moment. So I can make your picks. Hmm. <laughs> And you, uh, you hear in your head, can you hear what I'm thinking right now? Yeah. Oh, God. <clears throat> <laughs> Shit. Fuck. It's going. Okay. It's good, so I sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I've thought a lot of things over the years that I thought were private. And I'm just realizing people must be really polite because they don't say anything about it. Their no thoughts are private, they're just talking in your head. Oh my god. Okay, I didn't know that. In your head. The. You just <sighs> taught as young hatchling. Oh. I wasn't taught anything, I didn't go to like a school or anything. Oh, me neither. Oh, were you a slave too? No. Oh. Okay. I'm... Um, he's this gonna just. Awkward. He. Yeah, a little <clears throat> bit. He picks up the like the, the small bit of metal and uh, he takes it over and begins to like hammer it out into like a thin long rod. Um, still it's still pretty warm from when you brought it over. Um this guy have a question. Can you make one lock pick out of little bit of this material? What material? This the wrist my my bracelets. Well once I get them off I guess I could do that. Yeah, I could take one of the chain links and, and make it into a pick. Okay. That seems like a fair trade. Mm. You were kidding about everyone hearing my thoughts, right? No. Oh. This car oh. had thoughts heard as, as hatchling. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. I'm surprised my master didn't kill me sooner. All right. He starts to like, hammer metal uh, as he just starts working on your lockpicks. Uh, meanwhile, as he's working on lockpicks <laughs> and having an existential crisis that everyone can hear his thoughts now, uh, Gregor, I see you went over to the logger's tent. Yeah. Gotta kill uh, some time. <laughs> Maybe, you know, help them out or something. Sure. You approach uh, the logger's tent. Uh, you do see there's, um... A number of, of people like hauling uh, lo like raw lumber. There, there's not really a sawmill, but there are some people trying to like debark uh, large pieces of wood, trying to create something more constructive. Um, and as you approach, you see one of the guys goes, oh, oh, this, is, this is the one I told you about. He could like, I don't know, like blow up wood for, with his mind or something. It's crazy. I saw it. It's amazing. It's like, how would blowing up wood help us? It's like, I don't know. He could like blow up the trunk and then the tree would fall. It saves us so much time. Listen, I'm so glad you decided to join us. Okay. Um, we need to figure out what the extent of your abilities is and then put you in a team based on that. We could, oh. He's like, he like puts his hand on one of friends. If he's as good as he was in the arena, we could have the South Quadrant cleared in like a month. You're full of it. There's no way. It's like, I'm telling you, 
We could do it. The dream could be real. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so like, uh, as they're they're like yeah, intensely. Like, yeah. Uh... Do you do you like back away as like they're talking or? Well, I just wanted to help a little bit, not necessarily join. I'm not wanting to stay in Exilos, so uh, I can help a little though today. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, that. Sure, that'll be fine. And we can convince him to stay. We just have to show him the good life. It's like, he can probably hear us right now. <laughs> Please stay. Please. <laughs> uh, so, Gregor, you help out the loggers. Um, with your dendrokinesis, it is beyond easy to to help them. Like You see, like they, they try to like show you the ropes of you know how to properly prepare for felling a tree of certain sizes and you just like blink and the tree trunk explodes into shrapnel and the tree falls down they're like one of them is openly weeping um <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it's 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 pretty easy for you this yeah. is this is super easy for you um I mean, okay. I have advantage on any carpenter or wood carver tools. Uh, they, you know what? They'll, they will supply you with carpentry tools for free for your services at the loggers' <laughs> tent. Uh, yeah, all right. Hundred percent. Um, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, he would ask. Um, maybe because these are permanent. Hmm. Mm, do you guys need any? Fences at all. Uh, the, the, these. Uh, well, yeah, he'll tell you that um, that's primarily their job. Like, a lot okay. of their job is preparing, like, lumber for uh, the walls. and the... There, there are dangerous things in the jungle that do sometimes encroach on Exilos. That's why the hunter's tent is as close to the jungle as possible, so they're mm -hmm. ready to defend. But they do create uh, as many fortifications as possible. Um, he's not saying no. But that is also their job. So if, if you can make their job easier and make defenses, he's not going to turn you down. I'll, I'll just ask them. I'm just trying to help out today. So he'll mm -hmm. just basically ask, where's the, you know, weakest part of the of the encampment? Probably down by the shoreline. It's hard to create good wooden fortifications in the sand. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can, like, fortify the shoreline defenses. Yeah. Well, it has to have probably... roots of nearby plants to do the path of a thousand uh oh i see what you're doing you're trying to do that right yeah. um it's possible there yeah. could be yeah it's just powerful stakes and it says that they're they're permanent so yeah so. uh so Whenever yeah i'd say want me to make the, something like that they'll <laughs> they'll they'll link instruct you on where to go right. and uh well. throughout the day gregor you help them uh create magically like control the the, the roots themselves shoot out of the ground like like long log like stakes that form a wall of wood uh, along one of their more weakened perimeters one of them drops to his knees and weeps openly into the open sky uh <laughs> at the it's beauty of what you have done much. i mean you you literally one of them is like you literally just did four days worth of work on a, from a, from a six-man team in two seconds yeah like, like by the <laughs> gods you know like, they they you, you could they try to spend the day like they probably get you some booze some food they get you the comforts they can they try to show gregor the good life here that you could live like a god amongst loggers if you wanted to <laughs> but ultimately there's more to do in life than log yeah, <laughs> yeah. trust me this is a nice jungle it's just not my home. <laughs> I understand. But if you ever... If you ever return... You will always have a home at the loggers camp. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I love you like a brother. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point it has gotten uncomfortably awkward and Gregor decided to go. Bye. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Fiskar... <laughs> uh, you've been patiently waiting... Uh, after about yeah, an hour or two, as I sat out with Barnabas, and yeah. Waited. Mm -hmm. uh, after about an hour or so of, of chatting with Barnabas, who seems, um, he seems very 
talkative now that he can. You learn that uh, he was also uh, born into slavery, never given education, and uh, doesn't know how to read, doesn't know how to write, but knows his name as it was given to him. Uh, and every time he's tried to tell someone it, they just give up halfway through and call him Bamba. And so he's kind of just accepted it. And so, yeah. Can I teach Barnabas how to, like... Write his name? Yes. You absolutely can. And he is now crying. <laughs> as he looks into this, like, he looks into the sand as he etches, like, with his finger, like, a really craggly bee, yeah. like... That's not my round, name. it's just sharp. Yeah, things. just sharp edges. Yeah. He points at it and says, That's my name? Yeah. You are my lifelong friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I already have lifelong friend. That's oh. Freya. I don't know if I can have more than one. That's fair. So... No, that's those are the rules. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. But you'll be um lifelong friend almost. Almost lifelong friend. Like I'll accept like that. Friend. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna write my name again. He just okay. goes back to writing it. Uh, after a bit, <laughs> you see like a, a Lou comes up behind you guys. And it's like, oh, Barnabas. That's like, he's, like reading it on the ground. And you see as he says Barnabas, he turns around like, and you hear in your head, he said my name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, um, we'll talk about that later, Bon, but. Barnab Yeah. Um I, I made your picks. And he uh he comes over uh with a couple of like really thin stone picks that you know would not last very long. Uh and he comes over to your shackles and um if I I'll Okay. And he just goes in and starts to try to pick your locks. Uh I am going to I said um Viscar can pick on lock on ankles if it would help. Probably do that first. Yeah, yeah, just in case they break. Yeah. Um, so I, how about I do it? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Your, your yeah. hands look real shaky. Uh, I, this isn't really my thing. Yeah. No. I see. Okay. I will do it, and I will flare for advantage. I get twenty. If that uh, does work, Viscar has other options. With 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 finesse and ease, with these clunky tools, you both of the locks on your your ankles, and they both come away. Which point, uh, uh, Alu quickly grabs them up, uh, and looks them over. He's like, I haven't worked with processed metal in so long. Um, okay, I'm gonna take. Uh, oh, um, Barnab ba Barnabas. It's like he like looks over at him. Like nodding, he's like, "Okay, this is weird." Um, break, and he like points to like the links, and you see, Barnabas looks at them, nods, takes the the link over, uh, the chain over, and takes the hammer and begins to smash into it as best he can. At one point, he realizes like his hammer is not quite enough. He begins to breathe fire onto like the chain to soften it, and after a few moments, he does come back with a few of the chain links themselves broken, uh, and. Uh, he looks to Alu, and Alu looks to Viscar. It's like, um, you may need to stay here for a little bit. I'm gonna need Barnabas's help, um, softening the metal so I can forge it into proper picks, but I'll, I'll get you those. Okay? Okay. Um, and, um, th 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 thank you. Um, I could, I could actually make, like, weapons or tools or something with steel <sighs> so rally took other uh shackles from rally. friends well, so. okay he's gonna need to come to me anyway so i'll just keep that in mind yeah okay he's gonna try to take him back but uh, rally not uh, hunters share. always hunters always get the first pick of everything this car would know if Rhea still has hers on her wrist and ankles because she broke hers as well yeah. Viscar does know, but Viscar not share. <gasps> <laughs> Villainous. Well, no, because Viscar had to ask Freya. Freya, you know, just mm. don't volunteer not Friscar things. He's <laughs> <laughs> rude. <laughs> so, uh, you spend the rest of that day as uh, Alu and Barnabas work to quickly, like, soften and then shape and hammer the metal. Um, Viscar... Through your efforts today, you get a set of thieves' tools. Yay! Um, 
Uh, Viscar will message Freya via at the end of the telepathic link and say, um, Freya, lifelong friend, um, Viscar um, at a blue tent and he make uh, use of shackles if you want rid of yours. Oh, thank God, I wanted these things off and caving like crazy. <laughs> and she'll like start you. making her way over. Okay. <laughs> Um, so with, uh, with Freya and Viscar getting their shackles removed, you've given, a uh, significant raw material to Alu. Um, Viscar got his, uh, his, uh, set of thieves tools. Uh, Freya, is there anything you would ask Alu to craft for you? Uh. You can uh, wear a buckler without having it in your hand, right? That's the point. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. strapped to your arm, basically. I guess you'd ask for a buckler. He, like, looks at, like, one of the shackles. And, like, you see him, like, weighing the amount of material, and he's like... Doesn't have to all be metal. No, 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 it's okay. Um, I mean, these guys... I mean... It... The shackles were with you. They came with you. They were your materials. That's fair. Uh, I'll still have enough left over to do other things with. I can do that. Um, uh, Barnabas, I'll need your help. And uh, they together uh, begin to forge worked steel. Uh, something that the exil exiles here have not had in a long time. Uh, and Freya, by the time night has fallen, and the sun is down, and a lot of the activity in the camp has kind of waned a bit. Uh, you have yourself a bit rough. Uh, in fact, I will even say, looking under the uh, primitive arms handout, because it is made of forged metal, I will give it the rough quality, which is the highest of the three between rough, makeshift, and crude. Uh, it is a rough buckler. Uh, it does not have the minus one to AC. Uh, actually, it doesn't. That's right. Uh, basically, if you take a natural twenty, if you get hit by a crit, the buckler's AC will be negated until you spend uh, part of your long rest to perform maintenance on it. Ah. Uh, a crit will negate the AC bonus of the buckler. Is some of it made of wood? No, this is almost entirely just like a like almost like a pot pan of metal as he oh, took okay. one of the shackles and flattened it out into like a foot wide circle okay. and there's like a leather strap riveted to it for arm use i, I thought she was just going to put like little pins of metal in it or something and then in most of its wood okay uh no no uh because uh mm -hmm. you provided the shackle he wanted to do a good job makes sense nice ac <laughs> so you get plus 1 to your ac while you have the buckler until you take a crit Yes. So Ooh. that freaking handout gets used one way. Yes. Some way. I would want to do something else on like the second day. How many days are there? Oh, three. Wow. Oh, the third day is uh when the yeah when they comes. You you've oh, got two I full think. days of time off, and then on the third day they'll arrive. Freya to Freya would deliver the clothes they got from this car to him. Sure. Um, Thank you. Ask him what he's been up to since he's been here. Oh, well, learn this is Barnabas, not whatever his other name was. I um, thought it was Bon, but I'm sorry, Barnabas. Yeah, and you see, like, Barnabas puts his hand on, like, Alu's shoulder, and uh, uh, Viscar, and I guess Freya, because you're both telepathic, right? Yes. Uh, you'd hear in his, in his mind, he says, everyone thought it was Bonba. It's okay. I forgive you. Oh. Okay. You hear this in your own voice, by the way, because yeah. he doesn't have a voice to have his inner voice be. That's confusing. <laughs> Very uh, weird. He can talk. Yeah, he talk. Very quietly. Um, and then the, the scar got knocked big. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, you see, um, <laughs> Freya, you see Alu go, um, so, um, um, your friend here told me that apparently everyone can hear my thoughts all the time, and uh, I just want to say I'm really sorry. The first time I saw you, 
I, I didn't mean it in a, a bad way. I just, I'd never seen anyone that pale and I was worried that you were sick. Um, I really, I didn't mean it like an insult. You're beautiful in other ways, I'm sure. I just, you really look like you need more sun. I'm so sorry. I really didn't mean to say that like it was a mean thing. Okay, uh, first of all, he's wrong. No, not everybody can hear your thoughts. We just tend because we're psionic. Oh, what? I I thought everyone was like us, Freya. No, what? no, this car. We have psychic abilities. Not everybody has. Alu goes like beat oh. red under his scales. He's like, oh, okay. Oh, that was stupid of me. I'm sorry. Second uh, of all, hmm. what exactly were you saying about me? Um, uh, um, um. <laughs> he starts like having a panic attack. Uh, I don't care. Okay. Alu's had a rough day. Uh, <laughs> so, you rough guys spend... <laughs> yes. So Freya and Viscar spend their day at Alu's tent pretty much, uh, getting new clothes and a uh, thieves kit and uh, a buckler. You guys have uh, have made good use of your time with Alu. Uh, Gregor, you said there was something else you were thinking of doing? Um, Probably go to the hunter's tent and try mm. to find... Abanu. Abanu, okay. Uh, we'll get to that real quick. Was there anything else um, Kefala wanted to do as she's finished her uh, her time with Paizane at the, the place you, you don't have detect magic available yeah, uh, for uh, today? Pretty much I'm going to sit on the dock and just kind of focus for eight hours. So... Ah, as I okay, you take a long rest. Got take, it. A, take a long rest and then I, well, I guess... Oh, yeah, I guess... Um, I would just go back to Paizane's place to rest, and then after that, come back out here to have a chance of discerning more stuff. Sure. Okay. So you're committing to that. Okay. So then, Gregor, uh, you head over to the hunter's tent, um, and you you do find uh, first of all, it's it's like a ring of tents around like a small clearing uh, of trees, uh, and you do see a couple. There's there's a number of people here. You do recognize Srali. Uh, speaking with uh, Horak, and uh, you do see Abanu off to the side. She seems to be gathering some equipment up. Uh, next to her is the large ogre. Uh, you also see the Goliath. Uh, pretty much everyone that was in the battle ring was a hunter. They were the best fighters of, of Exilos. You also see the gladiator. Um, like, looks like he's gathering some stuff together, and you see him, like, going to the Goliath. It's like, Listen, I need payment for Alu. That was a good spear. I need to make a brand new one. Maybe not of wood this time. Please, I, I promise I'll pay you back. And see the Goliath goes, <laughs> Yeah, I, uh... No, you can't have... You can't have my last kill. It's like, but I, I, you don't even use it. You're just showing it off. It's called a trophy, dumbass. It's like, they're just having an argument over there on their own. Uh, and you do see a Banu is uh, off by herself near near a little bit apart from the ogre. Uh, and she seems to be uh, either, like, it looks like she's restringing her bow mm -hmm. and preparing a few arrows. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna walk on over to <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure! Uh, you you <laughs> yeah. do catch a couple of eyes as people see you in the hunter's tents, and nobody makes any move to, like, kick you out, but you definitely immediately feel like you're not supposed to be here. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, okay. As um, uh, Abanu sees you approaching, she kind of smiles a little bit and uh, and stands up. Uh, uh, hello again. Nice bow. Uh, thank you. Uh, I can really I? Uh... Didn't want to uh, splinter it because of the size. Yes, I realized after the fact that must have been your doing. That's a, a remarkable talent you have there. You know. It, Magic is seen, obviously, as a bit of a, an unwelcome thing here, but... I'm your... telling that to the lodger's tent I just saw earlier. Oh, I'm sure they were very ecstatic to see you. That was more to the point of what I was getting at, is your talents might be the most welcomed of magical ones, if you can do things like that. But something tells me since you went off with that claim keeper. Unless I'm mistaken, are you going to be joining his little foolish expedition? I was planning to. 
That's a shame. I was hoping to get to know you a bit better. What? But, other than being a hunter, what else do you do here? It's not a lot to do here, I'm afraid. Exilos is not a place for vacationing. But I live, I fight, I hunt, I hone my craft, and I plan. He just, he looks at her and like, um, hold on a second. She, she, she plans. Hmm. What, what exactly are you planning? If I may ask. Well, I have no intention of staying here either, but I certainly do not wish to undergo the trials. I am planning on building up enough of a... Uh, a stockpile of goods to barter with a, a pirate vessel to get me to Risenrack. And then from there, I can start new. Maybe gather some allies. Maybe find a way to undo this without the claim chieftain's help. All magic is... That simple, too. I don't expect it to be simple. I expect it to be very difficult. But I... I refuse to cater to her whims and undergo these trials just to live my life. And if I have to, maybe I'll find a home elsewhere. But as you and I both know, there are reasons to stay here. I mean, sounds like we have a similar goal. Then maybe you could be persuaded not to undergo the trials and stay here a bit longer. I I wish I could say I was close to fulfilling my goals, but I'd be a lot closer with an ally like you. I'm just thinking bigger. Really? <laughs> Do tell. Well, between me and you, I think very strong to undergo the trials. I was thinking he could be an ally. See, she gives you a very a very intense look. Like, she's really trying to understand what you're getting at. Really? You think he could be an ally? Has he I given do. any impression of this? He said some things that were a little off-color for someone who worships, loves claim, uh, claim chieftain. Hmm. That's so. Yeah. Tell you what. If you do these trials and they're not death traps and you do get out of here. If you ever feel like making the trip for a poor, honorless exile. I'd be happy to join up with whatever his ideals lead to. And we'd be happy to have that. I just... Hmm. She will return the gesture. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. I heard those two bickering over a shield. I gotta go back to Logger's <laughs> tent. Help me another one, I guess. I wouldn't worry too much. He breaks one every other week. Oh. They're not very oh. well made here, unfortunately. Not like my bow. You have to barter for something like that. Yeah. But if we do not see each other again after you leave for your trials, well met, Gregor of Glimmerford. She'll bow back. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'll just walk off, I guess. 
Yeah. Um. And then go to the loggers tent. <laughs> go back. Okay. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> I need some blood. Just <laughs> one. <laughs> <It's> return. It's <laughs> your return. <laughs> like really tone it down just a little bit. Like, <laughs> all right. So Gregor, you go back to the loggers tent. You spend the rest of the day helping them make helping uh, them. new. Yeah, make new stuff. Repent for your transgressions against the hunters in that fight. Um, I'm gonna say at this point we wrap up the day one. Uh, you guys reconvene at Pisian's tent. He has, uh, I'd say during the day he went to the stock and got enough to get you guys like some bed rolls and such, uh, since he's playing host basically. Oh, thank you. Um, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I have a tiny hut. I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> um. And you guys, uh, you guys spend the first day gathering and meeting new allies. Uh, Megan, how late can we go tonight? Um, like, ten at the latest? I can do ten. Okay, great, cool. Um, that just helps get a little bit more established for the next session. Appreciate it. Um, so, uh, day two rolls around. Uh, Cafella, you're yes. the only one I know that has a definite wants to do today. Yes. Uh, so you go... With Paizane back to the Seawolves market? Yeah, so... Um, or he doesn't need to come really at this point. He, you know where to go. Yeah. So at that point, I would go back there. So I would just sit down, since I don't have anyone to put my hand on. Uh, sit okay. down, send the familiar down. And... Well, would you want Paizane to accompany you if you asked yeah, him to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would uh, uh, Okay. prefer his accompaniment. Can't kill, him yet. Can't kill him yet. Can't kill him yet. Um, I was just gonna say. Can't kill him yet. As you're sitting there on the dock, a thought does creep in. Mm -hmm. You're alone. Nobody's on the market for a while. Uh, is is Viscar coming? Is that yeah. what? Oh, yeah. okay. Because um, Viscar can change um, their primal bestial soul uh, to oh. be swimming. Ooh, oh, so you want to come and help them? Great. Yeah, I want to help. So, I Kefella, don't know any of this. As you're, as you're thinking this, like, I want to say, you and Paisen are alone on the dock for, like, a minute. The, just the sound of the waves mm. and the hand's voice begins to creep in your mind. Turn. No one would know. Kill him. It'd be too easy. We could make it look like he wasn't dead at all. We could pretty him up. Nobody would know he's already your pet. All you'd have to do is, and then you hear <laughs> on, the, on the wood as Viscar approaches, and you hear the, the hand go, later. <laughs> and then goes quiet. Uh, mm. Well, uh, suppose we sh I shall send my familiar down. Yeah. Uh, hey, Viscar. Uh, oh, you boy. came along. Yeah, Viscar can swim real good. Okay. Um, yeah. Another pair of eyes couldn't hurt. Okay, jump in water. Yes. <laughs> she points yes, to like where follow the my familiars. familiar down. We will take okay. a closer inspection today. This time with magic. Okay. They're going so. swimming. They're having a beach episode. <laughs> it's the beach episode. <laughs> the fabled beach episode. It's yes. finally happened. It's clean. <laughs> Gregor thinks of it and he comes back over like. 20 minutes later. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, since, since four of the five are doing this, what is Freya doing? Uh, <laughs> if, nobody bothered, if nobody bothered to wake her up, Freya just sleeps. Sleeping okay. in? Okay, great. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no schedule. You could sleep. Um, um, all right. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll just ritual cast. Detect five hours magic. like a whisper. Awesome. So okay. So you do a tool cast, detect magic. Viscar, you go down with them. Um, Viscar, give me a perception or investigation. Sure. Um, just so you know, I have blind you do have, sight. Yes, you do have that. Uh, I, I saw that on your page that you are yeah. thankfully uh, sighted, even though Dragonborn for some reason aren't normally dark visioned. I don't get it. Um, one DD will fix that. Uh, mm. But uh, 15 uh, perception. I guess if that feels like it's not going to perception yet. Does a 16 <laughs> help? Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, okay. Cafella, you cast Detect Magic in the yes. area. Yes. Mm. 
think on this for a sec. Mm -hmm. There be. Uh, from before, based on what uh you your your check before and what you've heard about the captain. I think what Detect Magic helps confirm for Cafella is that you will not have any answers until he does it, or you've seen it at least once and you have more data to go off of. Uh, I'd say Cafella now feels confident that if there's something magical going on, it's not lingering in this spot. Okay. I will also, to that end, also say you feel like it's not like there's something about this spot that's special. It just okay. so happens to be the spot that he parks the ship at every yeah, time, basically. Makes sense, but just needed to know if there's yep. anything more I could do. Yeah, in absolutely. If I um, was a this... druid. <laughs> <laughs> Viscar, with a 16 perception, um, you see like the, the same thing that uh, Cafella has been seeing, which is like this, this like six foot wide circle of like packed, like like crushed kelp, uh, crushed like sand like packed down you can it's a very obvious like ring it's not a perfect circle but it's just an area where something has tread here for a long time that even to the point where the, the sea doesn't fully wash away the traces um with a 16 perception you catch the the slight glinting of light just a slight bit of like the sun filtering in through the waters down to where you're at it's not it's not like pitch dark down here but it's dark enough that dark vision does help um and you find uh 10 gold pieces Hmm. Seems like these may have like been loosely fallen out of a pocket or from the ship. Uh, and you have probably the most money of anyone in Exilos. <laughs> nice. Um, let me see something. And I'm the cleanest in Exilos. <laughs> <laughs> As Gregor jumps in the water, I am the cleanest. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta let my stuff out to dry though. I'm I'm stripping before. Okay. <laughs> Viscar Don't look. for Ice Queen does this does she want Viscar to uh mess up ring or leave? Oh like to like mess up the, the ring of like packed dirt or mm. I'll cast a message through the familiar. Uh, yes, to, that would be uh... oh, everyone's right. psychically linked right now. Psychically right. Uh, yes. <laughs> Suppose that would be useful. Okay. Okay. So you just tear up the ground there. Um, yeah, you don't you don't notice anything. There's nothing like something that occurred to you as you're tearing it up would be like maybe there'd be something buried here. Uh, but as you tear it up, you don't seem to find anything. We all having fun in the water? Yes. Only me. Okay. Um, I'd also <laughs> like to, on like the center of the area, mm -hmm. um, because it does, it doesn't have any specific rules for like, sure. it doesn't have specific rules for like doing it against the animate things. But the spell itself does state that inorganic materials roll with disadvantage, which to me okay. makes it sound like this could like rough up the ground to a further extent. Inorganic. Yeah, sure, I could see that. Uh, a sudden loud ringing noise, painfully intense, erupts from a point of your choice. Your creature is JX radiate. If you make inorganic materials, just stone, crystal, or metal. Um, it's not gonna do a massive amount of damage, but I'll say, like, the sound waves underwater do, like, ruffle a bit. There's a lot of, like, kicked up sand and dust, and uh, a big old a big old sand cloud does form, uh, and by the time you and Viscar are done, this area is indistinguishable from what it was before. Okay. Making the water all murky and shit. I mean, it's already <laughs> murky, but... <laughs> yeah. Um... Kind not really much else because there's nothing here. So, um... This guy will climb onto the deck and shake like a dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. Have a nice dippy dip. Yo. All right. Well, I think that's all we can do here for now. I get the feeling from how these 
people are. <sighs> Getting spell components would be a difficult task. Spell components? Um... Why best do you bet. need spell components? Your best bet would be a loo. And even then, I'm not sure. Mm. You could try. <sighs> try to dry off, just go... Like Alright. Put my stuff back on now. My rags! You guys got new wares, I see. <laughs> um, they look nice. I will stop by the stock oh, as well first today. Okay. So um, get your yourself some stuff, or well, I picked up some clothes yesterday. You did get clothes yesterday, but yeah. there is, I would think, like I could pick up like extremely minor things that would make sense from there. For example, mm -hmm. for um, mage armor, a piece of cured leather. Absolutely, yes. So we'll I could pick up like that. so. For... Yeah, Pisy would remind Gregor if you wanted clothes, you could get them at the stock. Well, maybe um... not in my size. We'll see. <laughs> So for the purpose of exactly a sewer. <laughs> that, um, I'd like to, it's very general and non-specific. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to spend my day going to the stock, finding any materials that are minor that can be used as spell components, as well as... I see what you mean. As well as... I think that if you went to each of like the, like the hunter's tent, the gatherer's tent, the logger's tent, and Lou's tent, and the stock, between those five places... You could probably amass enough minor materials to to m meet your needs. I believe yeah. what you're going for. I'm gonna look around okay. too. Um, able to get like containers that would hold like a water pouch and like right. other stones, types please. of things. I literally have a thing that requires dust. I'm sure that's easy to come Absolutely. by. I just need something Absolutely. to hold it in. Um, Okay, just, uh, I'm a spellcaster. I need to be able to cast my spells. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so just tell me, where do you go looking for these things after this? Uh, I'm not going to the hunter's tent. Okay. Because, because they hate me. They will hate That's me That's true. Good Good thinking. I was wondering if you'd remember that. <laughs> no. Um, I'll, okay. I'll, join, I'll join her. I will. Try to find components because I have some spells that I need to post. I'll go to oh. um, the stock lose and um, yeah i need to go to a lose because i have some so uh yeah. for okay. now just the stock and a lose i'll have to look through my spells okay all right uh you head over to the stock you get some of those basic basic things you grab like a, a smattering of random things cured leather being one of them uh as well as a couple containers um and then you head over to a lose tent uh, and when you arrive there, uh, you see they are uh, Alu and Barnabas. You see, you finally meet them. They're the the Dragonborn and the Lizard Folk. Um, uh, lizard Folk being Alu, uh, who is currently in the process of like, it looks like he's trying to make what looks like a pickaxe. Mm. You you feel out of the shackle, the mm. metal from the shackle. Um, and uh, you see the dragonborn who clearly has been like breathing fire is like sitting back and like sweating heavily and trying to like cool himself down as he's been <sighs> trying to heat a metal that he's not used to working with to the point of being malleable enough. Um, and you find them kind of in the midst of a break. Uh, and as you approach the, uh, the little, uh, um, he's not small, he's just like very thin uh, and very meek. Uh, lizard folk kind of like looks up to you as he's sitting down cross-legged on the ground. He's got like an apple in hand or some sort of fruit. Um, oh, uh, you must be one of the new people. Uh, how can I help you? Uh, would other players have told me about the metal and stuff you did or? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. You would have informed yeah, at, the, okay. at dinner time. Just wanted to sure. know if I had knowledge or not. I would have caught, sure. went yeah. around with uh, <sighs> stuff too. Yep, you said you were going with yep, Kefella, yep, so you Gregor, you're there as well. Move yeah, yourself. I, sent you the list of things I, I see you're having trouble with that metal. Gotcha. My. Um, a little. Ally it's had said to... that uh, he, had g he gave you the uh, shackles that we were brought here in. Yes, that was a very rare find. We don't um, usually get manufactured metal, but with, um, with it, we could make a pick that will help us actually... Uh, harvest our own um so it, it's 
but yeah, believe it or not, that those shackles were a, a massive blessing to our community. So um, I'm I'm grateful to you and your your companions. I, I also understand that some of the shackles were um, yours as well. Oh, uh, yes. You see, like there's, there's, you see another pair, like two pairs of shackles. It looks like Srali probably came and traded them for something. Mm. Um, um, I already paid Srali for the shackles, but as I understand it, they were yours to begin with, and um, that means that he took them without paying you. So, um, in the interest of um, good relations, uh, what can I do for you two? Well, were you at the arena battle the other day? No, I don't go there. It's too scary. Ah. Good. It's probably better for your health. I accidentally took out a few bystanders. Well, I believe I could be of help to your tired-looking friend. Give him a break. Um, okay. Um, I, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. I need a few... Oops, didn't mean to click that. Sorry. And everyone around... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um dies in a frost explosion. I meant to pull it up for its component to look at it. Um, <laughs> well, it's a small crystal sphere. Yeah. Hey, I need one of those. I have a few materials that I need for magic that is hated oh, you use, here. You use magic? Yes. And you see like the first like spark of like interest in his eyes. Oh, wow, that's really uh, uncommon. Um, I can do two, and I'm here. You, 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 <laughs> You both are magic casters. I, yep. wow, I haven't really talked to anyone who thinks magic's like you know a, a good thing in a while. The um, loggers like it. That surprises me. Those who don't um, understand magic are just afraid of it. He like he see he just kind of like nods. Yeah, that's, that's what it seems like. Um, I um I don't have any. I'm not I'm not I'm not skilled like that. But I um right. I. Well. There are a few things I need, and since they were taken from me, it's very kind of you to offer, and you should, you should offer to me. Okay. But uh, I'm feeling right. kind today. Oh. Let me give you a... Don't <laughs> change my mind, Gregor. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't change your mind, Gregor. <laughs> Allow me to give your friend a rest, and I will expend a point of aura and cast Conjure Elemental and summon a Fire Elemental. Oh. I just, I go like, I'm like running the fuck away. So Gregor flees. Uh, Gregor, give me a wisdom save, actually. <laughs> Doing that, oh. I'm provoked! Okay. Uh, wisdom save? With a yep. disadvantage or normal? Mm, I'd say disadvantage considering the circumstances. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> flees from a loose tent <laughs> as far as he can at the site of the fire elemental. Uh, you probably end up at the logger's tent before you stop. I'm safe here! I'm safe here! There's no fire here! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, uh, with that, like, as Cafella summons the fire elemental, Greg goes, ah! screaming into the, in the d distance. You see Aluga, like, looks at him, and like, that was weird. Okay. Um. There's a story thank there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, who am I to judge? Um. So, for the next and, hour, uh, I'm concentrating on that. Okay. Uh, you see, like, Bar like, like Barnabas is, like, confused and a little scared, but, like, as this, like, fi flaming, roiling elemental steps up, uh, he just starts to like he like puts its hand over like the the raw metal that just begins to just glow red hot, uh, and Barnabas goes back to work, but like not breathing fire. It's a lot a lot easier. Uh, you see, Alu looks like, looks like he's in awe. Now of then, Alpha. there are a few things I need if you have them. Of, of course, um, yes, 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 of course. Um, uh, let me. Let me get a list. Uh, and you see he comes over with, like, like almost parchment-like leather strips mm -hmm. and, uh, like, a little, a little pot of, like, ink that he like, dips, like, a talon into. And he basically writes down whatever you say, like, a list of things okay. to get. Uh, I'm pretty um, sure he can have quartz. Um, don't worry about it. Don't worry uh, about it? <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay. As, uh, 
you list off everything you need, and after the hour is up with the fire elemental, Alu comes back with a pouch that has a massive diversity of like gemstones, powders, <sighs> materials, and for anything that is unique and rare enough, you see another secondary pouch of small green gemstones of kite. Oh, Universal okay. material components. How much kite? Because that's uh, I'm a just big... gonna let I'm just gonna let you know for the extent of this subplot, you have a spell component pouch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as Alu, right? <laughs> uh, as Alu, like as he's working, explains good. that when he was um, he was a slave of uh, Bardest before he was in exile, and um, I worked in uh, a magic shop. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful shop of, of incredible, wondrous things, and. Um, I had such deep respect for my owner, uh, but I didn't know that he was um, smuggling illegal magical items into the city. And one day I had too much curiosity and I read um, a scroll of some kind. And um, well, I guess you're, I guess if normal people read a scroll, nothing happens. But um, I teleported into the middle of the market in broad daylight. Um, and it sounds like he's talking about a scroll of Dimension Door that he mm. apparently cast without realizing it. Uh, as you, you recognize Gefella, uh that he probably has some like sorcerer blood in him mm. somewhere deep down. Uh, and next thing you know, he was uh, exiled as a reward for outing his owner's treachery against Zibadona instead of being executed. And that's uh. how he ended up here. Oh. As the most <laughs> learned slave in Exilos, <laughs> as he had a shop job. Mm. Wow. Uh, and he, he, he explains to you that he has never lost his profound awe and respect for spellcasters, and uh, he will give you the spell component pouch pretty much free because of your assistance with the elemental. Mm. When we get out of here, if I were to return... Would you want your freedom? Oh, uh, he looks conflicted. Like, um, I don't know if that would be a good idea. I don't like. He like 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 rubs against the mark on his throat. Unless I could get rid of this, I don't think I could ever. Right, of course. Well, perhaps once we get through the trials, we will figure that out. You feel like if you said that to anyone else in the camp, they'd laugh at you. Alu looks up at you with the most genuine sense of belief that you will pass the trials. And it's like, okay. Thank you me. have absolutely gained a fan. In, in a hundred percent. Hundred, hundred percent. All right. Um, so I'll a stay there for fan. the next hour till the elemental goes okay. away um, uh, and then I'll try to chase down our little gnome friend and see what the fuck that was about <laughs> uh, yeah after about an hour Cafella, you walk back outside and you can pretty much like ask like did you see a little gnome running and you'll get enough people being like yeah the little freak went that way <laughs> uh, I was, basically an hour, an hour earlier was this gnome going Wah! And through the, the camp, <laughs> screaming his head off. Through the camp, it's just like, it's burning day! It's burning day! <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, so you can find find Gregor at the logger's tent. They've got, like, a blanket around Gregor. They're, like, they're like, like handing him, like, a stein of, like, of ale. Like, it's, it's, a okay, it's okay, a it's okay, it's okay. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, they're trying to like comfort Gregor as if like like a trauma victim. Good. The sale's good. Helps. <sighs> Where did that little runt go? Uh, Cafella, I think you managed to track down yeah. Gregor at the logger's tent. Gregor! <laughs> there you are. Ah! <laughs> right. What was that okay. about? 
Okay, it's not with you, thank gosh. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fire is not um, what I like to use, but it was useful here. Yeah, I like the ice better. <sighs> <laughs> oh, that's a that's a mm, that's a question for Mike. Um Yeah. So per the spell, I can't summon an ice elemental. So you can change. The uh, there's. Uh, I know that what, they water? exist. It would be water, um, fire, air, and earth. I know. So ice. ice I exists. think ice elementals. I think ice elementals are like a homebrew technically. I don't oh, think yes. they technically exist. But if you would let me, that would be Kafela's preferred. Yeah, <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So I know you have those ice elementals you use. I do. As long as they're CR five or lower. Let me let me con confirm the ice elemental stat that I have, and I believe it was in this module. Let me just check it real quick. Yeah, because it's if it's too strong. We'll probably say no. if not, then I'll just use like a water, a regular water elemental that's CR five or lower. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice, 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 ice. Ice baby. Ice, ice baby. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. Down here. Ice elemental. What CR can you do? Uh, five or lower. It is six, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Yeah. Water it is. Yep, that's fine. No worries. Yeah, Ice elemental is pretty strong, actually. Yeah, they were seven hit points. <laughs> yeah, we they were they were fun to go against. Yeah. So I had a feeling I almost expected them to be like seven with how. Honestly, I, I'm surprised. I think that might be a bit of a low low roll. CR for them. is bullshit. So CR is bullshit. Challenge <laughs> rating is absolute bullshit. Ancient dragon one v one. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Q. <laughs> Not Q. Twilight. 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 Probably could be Twilight. Twilight. Yeah. I said Agent, but then I saw the thing that said Q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Agent. Make... <laughs> Should I make sure not to use that when we're out doing the trial? You think? You think? Do you think you shouldn't? Kefella, if you'd like to give me an insight check with advantage at this point. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, Gregor has an aversion to fire. I'll just lay it out there for Kefella. Okay, yeah. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. There is a fire phobia here. I can use this to play it. I can use this. <laughs> I can use this. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> sure, sure you can. Uh. <sighs> Be here. No, you sorry. I just safe. had the evil thought of hallucinatory terrain and everything is on fire. <laughs> 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 that would be mean. If Capella does have like an evil twist in this this subplot, that will yeah. be. It. Oh, yeah, that's that, yeah. that's hilarious. That would anyways, that would do it. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> well. Are you here to torment me some more? Not this time. <laughs> At least she's honest. So, okay. loggers. Mm. I suppose they would like you after what you've done. I'm like a god to them now. <laughs> See, here's, your, <laughs> here's your ale refill, my lord. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <give you money. laughs> right. I have nothing to do here. That's no. true. No, you don't. Very accurate. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I don't even know where I'm gonna go. I'm just fucking off somewhere else. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. You can just mill about. You can explore. Uh, does anyone else have anything they'd want to accomplish on day two? Because tomorrow is the day of the pirates. Um, did we decide what we're doing? Yeah. Oh yeah, we should meet with the group and make a decision we, we need to today. Go to Kaizane's place. Yeah. So you probably uh, say, so let's go to everybody Kaizane. reconvene at because you guys have the psychic link uh, yeah. throughout the day. You guys can mm -hmm. reconvene. Uh, and meet up and be like, hey, we should go hang out at Paizane's place. Uh, so as you guys reconvene at uh, Paizane's tent, uh, Paizane will let you know that what he did during the day was he went to Marauder's Watch and bribed the watchman there to take tomorrow off uh, and let him, basically let someone else take the shift, which will give you guys the tower uh, hmm. with no one there to witness you guys teleporting onto the boat, if that's what you so desire. Um, 
So, yeah, with that in mind, <laughs> eh, so it's just a, he just how, wanted some booze. How exactly does your ability work? <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, it's called Phantom Caravan, I believe, Phantom is the one. You end up to the six willing creatures of your choice. You can see within 60 feet. Teleport up to one mile to a spot you can see. Or to an anchor you know of, but you wouldn't have an anchor on the boat. That'd be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> if there isn't an open space for all targets to occupy, it fails and is wasted. So you, you have to be able to see the spot. You can't just be like, I want to go to the ship within a mile. You have to physically be able to see it, which is why elevation is important. Because otherwise you're seeing the side of a boat. Which yeah. would be you appear and fall into water. <laughs> so we can we can see where we're supposed to. If you get to a high enough elevation from uh, Marauder's Watch, which is already on the most elevated part of Exilos at a cliff, and then is also a tower, yes, you could from there see the ship within maybe not necessarily at a mile distance, but thousands of hundreds of at least feet from the shore. Enough time that within a typical combat, you could probably get what you need before it even reaches port. Hmm. Whatever you guys want to do. I have that available. And then I think you could even do Phantom Caravan again mm -hmm. back to shore, even more so if you set an anchor first. Mm -hmm. So you have an in and an out. Just gotta spend the side points. The alternative is you could wait till the boat docks at the market, and then there's a lot less uncertainty about where to appear. It would also the trade-off being if you do it on the boat a mile away from shore, you will have to deal with the captain 100 percent If you wait until he docks, there's a chance you'll be able to get off the boat before the dock the captain comes yeah, back up to I the surface. Not to see the captain at all. <laughs> Well, but having the boat dock would have the drawback of Exilos being aware of what you're doing. If we take out the boat, leave it out in the ocean, we might even be able to get a rest before heading out. That's true. Uh, well, wait, so you mean like kill the crew while we're out there? That is exactly what I am saying. We could even burn the boat. Nah! No! No fire! This car have question. Mm -hmm. um, so, Captain is Alpha. Who are Betas? The first betas mate, most likely. Follow Alphas. We become Alpha. Not kill everyone. This car feel a little that. bad for killing so. that one Goliath earlier yesterday, but this car got a little. You see Pizanes looking at you all like, you know, I, I heard rumors of the Psionic Reavers. I didn't realize you guys were so moral. Huh. Some of us. Except oh. for you. Looks like a fella. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's more along the lines of, uh, I'm not I'm just after work. And, I'm not, uh, I'm not harping on it. It's fine if you want to do this more. I, I, to Viscar's point, I don't know if the pirate... Well, they do have some form of code. That would be the opposite of what I was expecting, which is we would specifically challenge the captain. Hmm. It's an option. Uh, Mike, would I know... So, claiming is a thing, but does claiming still apply to people who are in Exilos? Um... That's a great question. Uh, give me a history check. Okay. A history check. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> um, Wait, I would now. say, Kefela, to the best of your knowledge, <laughs> you're in Bardest. It's gotta apply. Huh. But uh, you could ask Pizane yep, if you wanted I'm more. Going to because oh. <laughs> instead of being like, ah, this is the fact, it's now. <sighs> Do claims still work for those in Exilos? Well, uh, kind of. 
it's in the spirit of claiming sure you can claim whatever you want that's the creed of bardest the power rule and if you are if you have the power you can rule however there are no claim keepers that are actually claim keepers here to manage claims there's no one to uphold claims there's no law here that would enforce a claim so you would have to be strong enough to protect that claim at all times I there's see. no official recognition also unfortunately um the pirates have never followed claim rule um, not surprised. They, they ceded from bardas eons ago and uh effectively risen wreck is its own nation and zivadona hasn't done anything against them you know, that's actually something I asked when I was a claim keeper. I asked her directly why we put up with them. And she never gave a clear answer. She always kind of dodged around the subject. If I didn't know any better, and I do, but if I didn't, I'd almost think she was afraid of something. <laughs> Our queen is not afraid of them. I, They're I know what it sounds doing like. Doing something but... for her. That maybe be the that'd only be more reason. likely. I don't know. I wish and, I did. In that case, I feel like attacking them would might be not so beneficial for us. What is your alternative? I don't know. But your whole thing is to get Zero to listen to you, right? Sure. If by chance she's letting them be because they're doing something for her, wouldn't that just piss her off even more? Well, this is just one pirate of a whole nation. I'm... Listen, I'm talking the short term here. We need weapons yeah. and gear yeah. to do the trial. Yeah. They have that. Yeah. I'm not looking to start an uprising with the pirate nation. I just want their shit. I suppose it was just the one pirate. Uh, if you don't want to do this, we can just go to the trial. I'm just telling you, I went to the, I did this once already two weeks ago, and no one came back with me. So I just thought you guys would want, I don't know, equipment. Zivadono won't miss one ship from a pirate nation who does something for her. Okay. But this car still would feel bad if we destroyed, um, you know, supplies for Exodus people. We could yeah. hand out the supplies if it's that big of a deal. I mean, that might even be a good idea to get back in their good graces so we could maybe spend a night here before going to the trial. In fact, if oh, we boy. can do this... Maybe we could just give away everything that they were going to trade. Oh, that's an idea. I don't really care what happens to the food and clothes. I just need something to hit something with that's not made of bone. Plus, a ship would be beneficial for them, would it not? Oh, I thought Ice Queen wanted to blow up ship. That's well, no. Paizane makes a good choice, a good observation. We could give them the ship and everything we don't need. We don't need pounds and pounds of food and whatever paltry treasures that they have. Just Probably the things... barrels of booze. Yes. I want at least one of those. <laughs> this car wants Captain Hat. <laughs> see, 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 damn it, I was gonna ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, so... It's fine, alright. Vissar, you get the, cap the captain hat. Paisen, you get the captain coat. Deal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the actual plan then? We're, we're, well, we're right, so, are we, are we teleporting to the ship or are we letting them dock first? I think if we're going to be taking over the ship anyways, we're going to have to deal with the captain one way or another. I think we teleport so that we don't have to try and explain ourselves. If we do it when they're yeah. docked, all the people of Exilos will be there, yeah, seeing true. us attack them. 
That okay. will only make our job more difficult. Versus the heroes a... coming back with a ship full of bounty. Might cause them a headache later on. Eh, we won't be here for that. The dumb ones will be happy. The smart ones will realize our mistake. This car have one last question. Sure. Um, does it... Do we ask hunters for help and tell them they can have anything that we don't take? So I think we have be beneficial to more them. people to attack. No, their hunters always get first claim and they'll try that to hold it. that. Paisane actually is oh, just like okay. like like nods with Kefella. I thought the same thing actually. I wanted to ask for their help, but they are very strict about the rule that they get the first pick of any hunt, which would probably include this. We'd probably end up having to fight them too over the gear. It's best if when they get to it, we've already taken the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, Viscar like planned. Okay. Then tomorrow, uh, the ship usually arrives near sundown. Then they stay overnight, have a raging party with the people, and then go back the next day. So tomorrow evening, we will congregate at the watch. Uh, and look, looking to, to uh, Gregor, you're kind of the... the uh, being uh, the glue of this plan. If you can do what you say you can do. Yeah. Okay. Wait, this car have one more question. Uh. <laughs> I, do we to kill everyone or do we keep some people? Because I don't know how to. She drive just knocked them out. We can Someone try. We we can try taking care of the captain first, and if they stand down, great. If they okay. don't stand down, listen, I'm not. I'm not an asshole, Kill but everyone. I'm not going to lose sleep over pirates who take slaves. Kill them until they stand in line. Okay. Viscar understands. Dark, but true. Yes, that's the point. You felt. You're growing on me for weird reasons. <laughs> mm. Pragmatic reasons. <clears throat> Ow. All right. So uh, I'm going to do a small time skip here mm -hmm. to the next day. Uh, for the sake of time. We're not getting into combat tonight, obviously. Yeah. Um, but you guys uh, spend the rest of that day or that evening plotting and planning. The third day, I'm going to say you guys probably just spend the day resting as you know you've got a big fight in the evening. You don't want to expend anything. Make sure everything you have is charged and whatnot. And then towards the evening as the sun begins to crest over the horizon, you guys can just barely make out what looks like a small black speck on the edge of the of the, your view as it begins to approach uh and paizane directs you guys to marauder's watch uh which is a bit rickety especially for the four the five of you to stand on at once but uh up there actually you don't even have to because gregory can do it gregor gregor not gregory mm -hmm. gregor can do it within 60 feet of him anything within 60 feet of him so only he has to be able to see it um gregor where are you setting your anchor oh, just God. for with a return if you need it. I just want to make sure to note this. Um, you could do like Paisane's tent. You could do the Marauder Watch. You could do wherever. He would ask their opinion. He would ask his group. I the think... logger's tent because it's funny. The logger's <laughs> tent? The logger's tent. Because it's funny. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny. That or Paisane's. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I think Paisane's tent is probably the Gregor, best where point. do you put the anchor? <laughs> There's been a, a, a chorus of Pisane and loggers. <laughs> one one loggers, most Pisane. Um, that's funny, but uh <laughs> It would be funny, but I think Pisane's tent does make the most Pisane's sense. Pisane's tent, yeah. Okay. Pisane's tent would make more sense. Well there is an argument to be made, weirdly, bizarrely, for the loggers tent, in case you guys needed to exit Exilos quickly. It is near to the exit to the jungle, whereas Pisanes ah. is on the other side of Exilos. Oh. oh, right. There's not an exit there. There is an exit up there, but not the way you want to go. You need to go this way to get to the trials. If we fucked up and needed to bail. So I actually, weirdly, actually, Megan, 
Logger's tent does have the most tactical advantage. As long as it's within a mile. Is it within, yes. Is it within a mile? Um, Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Because a, a, a mile is how far it, within, like, to the, the boat to here. Absolutely. Okay. You'd have to steer the boat away to be out of a mile, which would be weird. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, so, sure. put it in the Logger's tent from actual tactical advantage and funny. Great. Great. Okay. Absolutely. Uh... Okay. I will make a mark. For what it's worth, I'm casting um, Mage Armor before we teleport over. Smart. <laughs> Smart. And all I will... of us, including Paizane, are Actually, psychically how many? Okay. How many creatures? Up to six creatures? Yes, you can teleport. He can teleport up, up to six creatures, I think, including himself. Okay. So seven total. Okay, so he can get my familiar. You and up to six willing creatures. You could get your familiar and also other thing if you wanted to do it in advance. Um, or a water elemental. That's what I'm, well, I was debating that, but um, yeah. does Gregor have to be able to see the creature? Yeah, you have to. Be, Gregor has to be aware of the creature to okay. teleport it. So. Yeah. Okay. You Gregor could, can't yeah, you could just wait. See invisibility. I don't can want you? that coming with right. me. <laughs> gotcha. Guys? Water, sure. Earth, great. I um, love Earth. Not fire. That's concentration. Um, I I don't think I will because there's just so many other concentration spells. I think would be more useful here. Sure, sure. Okay. So as you guys prepare yourselves, you see Pisian like every Pisian does advise everyone be ready to fight the moment you teleport because um, even if we're not killing the 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 crew. They're gonna try to kill you. Mm -hmm. So you have to be prepared to defend yourself. So, like pull out weapons, get ready. Man, the moment the teleport out. ends, it's gonna oh. be battle, basically. Yeah. Can can we <laughs> ready an action to go off? Or no? Well, I think what, we can uh, cast well, Yeah, you could everyone but Gregor can ready an action. What would okay. you like to ready? <laughs> I would like to ready greater invisibility on myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> We'd like to rage. Rage. Pisian's so, readying a rage, basically. Get out. Okay. Damn. So, uh, um, as you guys oh, prepare yourself. Sorry, I can also cast another spell. Hold on. Uh, if you're doing it, uh, it lasts up to one hour. Right, but Kefeli, you're doing the invisibility after you teleport. Right. Because Gregor has to see you before we go in general. Like, okay, when we're here sure. waiting about to What are go, you casting otherwise? I, I just want to cast False Life on myself to get some temp sure. before we yeah, teleport you over. Yeah, prepare, boom, 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 all these different spells up, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Spellcaster. Well, mine's a, an action. I could probably do a bonus action uh, beforehand. Unfortunately, Gregor, I think you will be missing a, uh, a, a ready to action because you are the infiltrator here. So, I'm going to cast it at second level, which gives me an additional... Uh, okay. Freya. Uh, and Gregor should like teleport himself in between like me and Fre and uh <laughs> Oh I'm I'm gonna car. be uh I'm gonna be the middle. And then yeah. uh, an additional I'll set us up as the, uh, the arrangement we're probably teleporting in is like this. Yes. All my meat shields. Yeah. Plus okay. upcast. Okay. Alright. I I, so I I I I think <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Okay, so right. I have I'll have to modify the map for next week mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I didn't anticipate you being able to get to it in open fucking water. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will put us on the battle map just long enough to get the peaks at things. As Gregor, you see the ship deck approaching it, it, it can't be a mile i'm gonna be honest you don't have the visual capability to pinpoint the deck within a mile without like a spyglass but several hundreds of feet before it reaches shore long enough that nobody from shore could probably even see the battle happening on the boat from the point you're at the highest point you're at you can see the deck and you see people like ship hands getting ready for docking and, and everything uh I need to ask, what part of the boat do you aim for? Like the front, the back, the middle? Do you like the bow, the stern, right in the middle? Uh, do you go for the wheel? Yeah. Um, probably. Uh, probably from the where? Wheel. I'm, probably the wheel. Yeah. The wheel? Okay, you go for the helm. 
of the ship. Gotcha. All right. Uh, good to know. I'm going to put us on the map momentarily. It's definitely not in the docks. It is definitely not in the docks. <laughs> How could you uh, have possibly predicted us teleporting onto As the As you guys <laughs> disappear from one spot on the shore of Exilos and reappear animating on the deck of the Harbinger right next to the helmsman who was body quite tits as he is like looks over at you freaking out. Captain! As he cries out, and you see, standing on the deck below, previously giving orders out in preparation, <laughs> uh, you see a massive shark-headed man, hmm. a nice fine leather coat, a jaunty hat at an angle, and what looks like a massive spiked anchor in one hand. Ooh. Turns and looks up. And grins a massive serrated grin. Well, that's fucking interesting. <laughs> Men! We got guests! <laughs> and we will pick up <laughs> next week with you guys in open water fighting Captain Riptide of the Harbinger. Mm. Yay! Riptide! Riptide! Alrighty! That uh, that was the first <laughs> loop or twist that I didn't see coming was the teleporting to open water. But hey, it's good. Uh, we are still relatively on pace. However, I was hoping to get through this fight tonight and then role playing, of course, being as wonderful as it was happened. So I will estimate for this subplot five sessions, Ooh, roughly. Five. Mm. Okay. Five for this subplot at this pace so we'll see it could go faster could be slower could be whatever i'm thinking five first paisans so we'll okay. pick up next week with session 81 and part two of the trials of paisan we haven't even gotten to the trials yet <laughs> this is the trial before the trial yeah yeah the trial prep you know yes trial you, prep you gotta okay we're taking over the ship <laughs> <laughs> tiny gnome proclaims as the massive lumbering shark man below grins up at you oh yeah Oh Fun. my goodness, no, we're getting to rain now, right as we're about to end. Oh. Are you serious? <laughs> Why does this always happen? <gasps> Hello, welcome, welcome Panda, welcome Panda Please. Raiders. This, this is exactly like my nightmare again. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Um, we are just, we're literally just yeah. ending uh, a five hour stream of d, &D. <laughs> <laughs> um oh good well if, if everyone would like to see a battle on open waters against a pirate shark man with a group of crazy people next week by all means come back next week around 4 p.m <laughs> eastern time and we'll you'll see this amazing open water battle but uh i, I bid everyone else a very good night <laughs> thank you for joining at the last minute well uh, gonna, i'm gonna go ahead and send all sounds the good have a good night goodbye else. everyone <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Hi. big Thank tree. You for coming. <laughs> oh, that's Bye. funny. Bye. Okay, please watch the VOD, please. That's wonderful. Yes, please yes. enjoy. Watch the VOD. Thank you for the follows, big priest. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I'm going to send it over to another D&D player. <laughs> that sounds good. All right, uh, bye guys. Yep. Have a good night. Bye bye. 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 Night. All right. Uh, the, the everything's going bad with people gone. Thank you. Good night. Uh, it, it gets scuffed. I need a proper in between screen. Truly, truly need a proper in between screen. But yes, raid hopping. Let's go. <laughs> Why does that always happen? <laughs> oh my. Right. Send the raid over. Thank you for all the follows. Yeah, I sent the raid over. Mm. Oh my. <laughs> okay, so they're in. That, that's what it is now. Okay.
It simply is of, even though Penelope is asking you to drop the spell. <laughs> yeah. Your uh, stream's still. I know. Up. 